Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Boston Greeks podcast, the podcast that features uh, cool, interesting uh, people from the Boston area of Greek background. I'm Ari, your host. With me is Foti Stamos. What's up, Foti? Yasu Ari. Tikanis. One brother. Good, man. I'm, I'm super pumped and super excited for this episode. Dude, we do a lot of podcasting together. This is the most excited I've been for a podcast. I feel like, I don't even know, like a schoolboy. And not in a bad way, but uh, so excited because we have the group responsible for some of the best moments of my life. Likewise. Being in Boston, I growing up in Boston. Uh, these people, like without these people, I, I would be a miserable just wreck right now. And mm -hmm. it's, it's because of them that we are who we are and well, a lot of the stuff that we've done. If, you know, because of these individuals, if it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be so popular with the ladies. <laughs> I, th I think I would have always right? been popular. Right? Yeah, okay. In a different way. But anyway, but um, we have a reunion here, people, of the best Greek DJs on the scene. I want to say... Mid, anybody correct me if I'm wrong, mid 90s to mid like teens, right? Yeah, I and, would say so. Yeah. And, ah, oh, dude. Why you got to pick on me for my age already? We haven't even started. Why you gotta <laughs> there's only, there's only one here from mid 90s, I think. <laughs> it was early 90s. All right? early so why 90s. you got to pick on early me? Early 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's just, let's just say the last 20 years. There you go. <laughs> so, so guys, th th these are the dudes that put Boston on the map. These are the dudes that allowed me to do what I've done for the last 20 years with my website, without these guys, there probably wouldn't have been much to put up. There wouldn't have been much for me to do. And, and honestly, it's, it's, it's these guys and they're all friends. That's the best part. It's not even like a professional relationship. These are all friends. They're all awesome, awesome people. We love them. Everybody watching and listening. I'm sure, you know, one or all of them all good guys. And let me just do a, a quick introduction. Foti, you want to do an introduction of each yeah, of them? Yeah, let's, so let's go through the lineup. Uh, we'll go one by one. Let's introduce uh, to the episode, uh, George Kotsomanis. George, George, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no, good to be pleasure. here. Um, I'm very surprised you had me go first. Uh, you know, I think Peter should have went first following that whole whole spiel. Oh, no, this is an introduction. We're, we're just we're just introducing yeah. you and then we'll get to Peter <laughs> so he could start off with uh, some of the history. But uh, on our screen, George, you're first because you logged in first. So you, you got lucky. Well, George, tell <laughs> us, you know, for the audience, your DJ name, where you grew up and probably some of the spots that you were spinning through that duration of time. Sure. Uh, my DJ name is DJ Manis. Uh, that name came from just my the last uh, letters of my last name, because of Manis. Yeah. And um, I grew up in Marblehead, um, hung out with a lot of people from the North Shore, um, places I've DJed at. Uh, man, I can't even remember. Oh, some. We're going back. You were in a lot of places. So uh, 33 District, Ohm. Um, I had residencies there. I can't even remember where else. I know we had you at Splash for a while. Yeah, Splash. You did um, some appearances at El Panino for us. Yeah, there's tons of places. Yeah, all right. it, places, it, yeah. I'm sure all of us here have probably, um, you know, spun or did events at the same spots through the years, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Excellent. Thank you, George. And let's move on down to our next uh, guest, our main man, Dimitri Sotiropoulos, all <laughs> a.k.a. Well, okay, so I, yeah, I guess my name, I'm uh, Dimitri Sotaropoulos. I'm uh, also from the North Shore. Uh, I've been DJing now for about 15 years. Um, started just alongside George, who we just heard. Um, for a period of time in my early stages, I, I went by DJ7. It was my, my street name Love in it. the club scene. Um, I've come sort of a, a way where I've transitioned to just go by DJ Dimitri. So that's how you'll find me today if you're if you're searching for a wedding soon, okay. yes, give me a call. Um, or baptism. Or baptism, right? So, yeah, I, uh, again, I, I played at a lot of those same uh, clubs that George has played. It's been a while since I've been in the club scene. I primarily am in the uh, private event space now, but I still cater to uh, mostly like Greek or Greek-American events. Um, 
but yeah, a lot of these guys in here, we've all collaborated in the past or worked together with, and it's really exciting to actually talk to everyone all at once. It's been a, it's been a while and I'm excited yeah. for this. Yeah, man. It's a, it's like a mini reunion, everybody together. And I love it. All any, right. Let's Dimitri, uh, any spots real quick you want to mention before we move on? Like that I played at. I, yeah. I so yeah, so there was like a gypsy bar, rumor, we venue. I did uh, Ocean Club for you, Fati. Oh, yeah. uh, I did Umbria for you. I did uh, Splash again, 33. Excellent. Excellent. I, Excellent. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Great times. Yeah. Thank you, Dimitri. And moving on to our next guest, um, John Spiridakos or Yanni. Welcome to the show, brother. Guys, thank you for having us. Um, so, yeah, uh, John Spiridakos, uh, also North Shore. I think everybody here is from the North Shore. <laughs> For, nope, like, no, not Costa. 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 <laughs> Which one um, of these is not like the others? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, um, so myself and uh, Chris Paragias, aka El Greco, will be introduced soon. Uh, we started DJing together, uh, influenced by Peter over here, Peter Solaris uh, at Goya dances. Uh, oh man. <laughs> That brings it back. Dances. And uh, so, yeah, uh, Chris and I started DJing with his cousin and my brother. And Chris and I kind of kept it going, did um, all kinds of gigs, you know, over the years, production, remixing, recording, all that stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, spots that we did for Greek Nights, uh, there were a lot of one off spots. Um, but I think for me, you know, uh, was for Greek Nights was uh, Backroom and Venue. Uh, Backroom and Venue. Probably like the, yeah, the main thing. Excellent. But, Awesome. Thank you, John. And then moving on to our next guest, who's the most serious guest of all time. <laughs> the one and only DJ Thriller, Arthur Marcos. <laughs> welcome to the show, brother. Yo, yo, what up? Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. It's been a great pleasure um, living in the Boston area in this special time where I grew, how we grew up and having that whole Greek scene that we, uh, that we kind of grew up in. And, uh, as for me as a DJ, you know, I think I probably came in later in the game than most people would think, you know, like I grew up with Chris and John and they were always doing it. And you always had Peter always doing it. And I came in the game. I was like, I just love music because I was exposed to all those Greek nights, all those international nights. So when I came in, I was like, all right, I need to, I want to just get into music production. I want to get into DJ. And I remember John I'm talking to John and Chris and I'll be like, oh, I need, I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to do all this type of stuff. This is probably back like, you know, 20 years ago. So, but I grew up in that culture where it was like everybody around you was DJing or at the club all the time. And, and um, so for me, you know, when it came to actually start DJing, teamed up with, uh, with Chris, DJ El Greco, teamed up with Sigma Entertainment. It's the second coming of Sigma Entertainment after 4D was gone. <laughs> and we started doing those ginormous big Greek nights. I think it was yeah. that we, we took it to that next level where we, you know, we were doing the production, we were doing the mix CDs, we're, you know, going to New York, going to Philly. We we're like, we kind of blew it up. You know, we're getting attention overseas. It was like, you know, hit the internet really hard. And, and I think, you know, that was, I think that was my experience. I think, you know, it, ca it came from starting as like just going to these Greek nights. And then boom, being like a part of them, which, which was like, which, which was like, that was my intentions. In it. And, and now, you know, I'm still active. I'm still doing, you know, weddings and baptisms nice. and, but awesome. you know. Nice. Awesome. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Arthur. And then moving to the next guest uh, with us, who has been previously mentioned by the other DJs, Chris Parios. Chris, welcome to the show, brother. Yeah, thanks. No, this is exciting. Adi had mentioned that he wanted to do something like this a while back. So it's, Thank you, Adi, for being It's really cool. And you were very apprehensive because you don't trust me. You think I'm going to, like, go and do something crazy. I was a little apprehensive, yeah, just because I know you. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I, you're, you're being professional, so I like that. Um, just wait a few minutes. <laughs> uh, but, I, but yeah, you know so, what, Chris? Uh, Chris, be, uh, just right before you finish, um, I have one very special story that I am going to mention a little bit later on that has to do with you and John. And this is, this is a, a professional story. Like it's not crazy or anything, but just remind me. And then I want to also just ask you about um, uh, something that you guys did for me. So we'll, we'll get to that. So just go uh, ahead. Yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, cool. I think I know what it is. Uh, I... 
Um, all right, so Chris Paragius from the North Shore, uh, Lynn. I think most of us are from Lynn. Well, Peter was the, the OG from Lynn that started it all for my generation in my eyes. Um, I, I, my, my most recent name was El Greco. I started off with DJ Christos and DJ Valantis. I had an American DJ. And I was all over the place. Nice. Uh, <laughs> but I, I ended it off with El Greco um, because um, I, was really, I was really into Latin music this whole time. From like the early days of Spanish reggae to Latin house to international nights that, that Peter and his crew would throw. I was just obsessed with Latin music. And then towards the end, I was really into reggaeton. I was like, you know, man, I'm calling myself El Greco. <laughs> you know, that's the Greek, right? So that's where that came from. Um, and, uh, you know, over the years, geez, I mean, we started in 92 um, when we first got our turntables and mixer. Um, and and I got, I got to give a shout out to DJ Thanos, who was in here. He started with us. That's John Sparadakis' cousin. We all started together. We got, we got all turntables together, suggested by Peter what to get back in the day. We started buying vinyl. We started borrowing vinyl from each other. Johnny Makris, another one that we, we, we can't forget about. He was instrumental in this whole scene. Nick and we'd Chris. go to his basement. Me, me and John and Charlie, John's brother, we'd go to his basement. He'd teach, there, us how to, he'd teach us how to match beats. He was teaching us. He's like, you got a BPM, you got to do this, you got to do that. It was during the Euro days. So, we, so it's just unbelievable, those memories that I have. Um, so anyways, I mean, over the years, you know, it wasn't only Greek, even though towards the end, we were more known for, for, for the Greek stuff. But, you know, variety of music over the years. And, and John mentioned a few of the clubs that, that we've DJed at. You know, to add to that, you know, part of the Sigma days that Thriller was talking about, the, 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 the second portion of it, um, you know, Rumor, uh, venue, um, you know, who was it? Mansion. Um, there was all these clubs. I yeah, can't even think of them we're now. Bijou, remember Bijou with a big Bijou, name. yeah, yeah. There, there, there were so many clubs, but um, but yeah, um, you know, I, I think this will organically tell the story of the scene as as we um, as we continue here. Yeah. Um, especially, uh, you know, I know Peter has has a lot to to kick kick this all off with. So. And Chris, didn't uh, you and John Spidakos go by a, a, a duo name? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right. well, so we went by the we went by the Freakas because because that was our name when we were doing production and remixes for X Mix Records. So we just thought it was a cool name, and we just stuck with it for the Greek stuff too. Yeah, I mean, we were already like doing a bunch of gigs and like had some stuff, and like we'll get maybe get into like how we got into X Mix was, which was probably like. The biggest thing for us at the time is like awesome. yeah growing awesome. up playing this stuff and then we work for them you know so that's yeah. cool great yeah. thank you chris and now we're going to move on to our next guest from non non the north shore <laughs> south shore mr oh, sure. Mathras. welcome to the show brother thank you for taking the time to be with us thank you for having me first of all i'm, I'm excited um I feel like we're doing like a virtual sniyamas over here. We're going around the table, <laughs> kind of, and you say why you're here. Uh, I'm honored, actually, to be mentioned with all these DJs. I've worked with all of them, and they've all influenced me in some way or the other. My background actually goes all the way back since I was a little kid, actually. Uh, my father DJed. Um, he actually was one of the first original Greek DJs in Boston back wow. in the day. Before the club scenes and all that, he was uh, him actually, and he went by Hellenic Sound, which we've continued carrying on the name today with my brother. But uh, I learned DJing from him, and oh, wow. uh, and obviously fell in love as a small child. The records, all that eight tracks, cassette tapes, <laughs> all that stuff. And um, like most of these guys, I started doing DJing for my friends, Sweet Sixteens, house parties, stuff like that. But when I really wanted to get serious about it and, you know, start doing some weddings and other events, I uh, reached out to the godfather who's here with us tonight, Peter Solaris, and he was kind enough to take me under his wings, I remember. And I went with him to a few gigs and stuff and, uh, you know, helped me build confidence in my uh, emceeing and, and being on the mic. So I'll never forget that, you know. And then through the years, all these guys, I've... Uh, you know worked with and we had some fun times 
But as far as the club scene goes, I did a few events. So obviously I was more of a special guest. I wasn't the residence like these guys here were. But for me, I guess what I did, I took after the club. So people would, people would go out, obviously, what you guys did with Greek Boston, brought the Greeks together, yep, made yep. these awesome events. I got to participate in some of them. Most of them ended up, like Adi, I think, mentioned in, in some of his other podcasts, the matchmakers. They ended up meeting, <laughs> right? Yeah, and then yeah, going yeah. on to have their own events, you know, weddings and christenings. And, and that's kind of where I uh, took off with that. And a, a lot of the, uh, the couples I DJed over the years, I, I remember, you know, seeing them out in clubs when they were like, you know, puppy, yeah. puppy love, you know, young couples. And then I had, you know, the pleasure of uh, being part of their Costa. special day you know Costa, Costa, maybe what? you played the very perfect song that got them to to dance together and maybe have their first kiss maybe you're responsible you never know yeah right. maybe maybe <laughs> hey, maybe. Costa, where did, where did you grow up brother oh yes uh so i, I grew up in quincy south quincy. shore south shore. obviously i'm outnumbered here tonight i'm the only guy from the south shore uh, i grew up in quincy for most of my uh adult life and then um almost my childhood life i should say and then my adult life i live in weymouth currently in okay. the south shore still awesome and uh Excellent. yeah but i've this job is taking me all over new england so you know uh not just in this obviously in the city of boston but i've got to meet greeks throughout the whole uh, new england oh, area yeah yeah, yeah. i'm and, sure uh, i'm sure yeah i, I love it like Excellent. all these guys you know it's a passion we we do it because we love it we're gonna do it peter's still doing it you know and He's been, you know, at it since probably what, 16, 15 years old, probably Peter. 17, I got it. Yeah. 17, 18. Yeah, right. and he's not good. He's never gonna stop. I'm never gonna stop. Love Love it. It. It's in our blood. It's in our bravo, blood. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Thank you very much, Costa. Uh, we're gonna talk more through this segment. And then on to our last guest, uh, the moment we've been waiting for. As everyone has mentioned here, the godfather of our time. <laughs> Peter Solaris, Peter, thank you so much, brother, for taking the time in your extremely busy schedule. Uh, are you kidding me? This is the most fun thing I've done all, all yeah. year. <laughs> we, we, know, we know what you got going on, but you know, for you us, know? it's an honor to have you here. So thank you. Uh, for listen, when I hear music and DJing, count me in. And uh, and that's to me, that's kind of why I think, you know, all of us became successful because we didn't do it for anything else other than the passion for it, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I talked to you guys before, Adi and Forty. We've talked before. Like when I first got into it, money wasn't an object. It wasn't how much you're going to pay me to do, you know, a gig. You know, how, it was like, can I pay you so I can work at, <laughs> at, at, at a club? It didn't matter, you know. So I just feel really kind of, you know, no, no one knows the journey they're going to go on. So I feel really blessed of what I've done, where I've been, who I've played with. And, and to kind of, you know, wrap it up, it's like to be with all these other DJs when normally everyone's at each other and they're all competitive and we've got a bond over the years, you know, not only, I know a lot of you guys say, you know, I, I you know, I influenced you because I was, I was older. That's all, you know what I mean? It wasn't anything yeah. else. And, and um, for me yeah, in return, Peter, Peter, you're being a little bit modest because I knew you were one of the, the forefathers, but right now, tonight, after we went through this list, is when I really, like, seriously, I've known you for years. And seriously, this is the first time that I got the true impression of how much you actually were an influence because every single person here is, like, mentioning you in one way or another. And it's like, I mean, I knew Peter was, like, old school and he, like, was one of the first, but, like, you, you uh, you, yeah, you are, you, you're the real deal. Well, He's thanks, man. Like I said, I just, I feel honored to, to be in that position, but... You know, it's a reciprocal thing. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, Costa gives me props and John gives me props and Thriller, you know, and, and Thriller and Dimitri and Chris and George and and my boy Thanos and Yanni, who we mentioned, you know, like for me at the same time, you know, Costa, I, I've told you, I think before, uh, I am from Lynn, Massachusetts, right? Sin City, Lynn, Lynn, City of Sin. You never go out the way you came in. And <laughs> and a quick, funny story. One, one day, my music gets stolen. And back then... Yeah. <laughs> when your crate gets stolen, you're screwed, right? And I had a gig that night, a Greek gig. And I just started getting into the Greek stuff because I started with house and, you know, all, you know, Euro and all that international. So I went, I, I, I found, um, I don't know, someone gave me your father's name, Costa, right? Yeah, yeah. 
And I called him. He doesn't know me from a hole in the wall. And I said, uh, my name is Peter Solaris. I'm a Greek DJ. You know, I'm, 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 I'm in a pickle, blah, 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 blah. And the guy's like, drive to my house. So I, I drove. Where, do you, where were you guys living at the time? Quincy, probably in the time. Yeah, Quincy, you were, you were probably. I mean, this is, this is, you know. I don't remember that. I remember is, the story. I don't remember the. Uh... This is probably 25 years ago. Wow. Okay. All right. So I drove to your father's house. We're in the basement. And he's just like, he's telling me what I need. You take one of these. You need a sirto. You need a calamatiano. Like he's the big, I'm like, I got nothing. So he's like, take this, take that, play this, do this, do this. You know. So he sets me up, and you know, like stories like that. I, I never ever forgot that. You know what I mean? So, um, and and to this day, if I need music, because I'm not, you know, on top of it, I'll call Thriller up, and he'll send me a folder. I'll call. I see Dimitri at gigs, and I'm I'm like, you know, take a break. I go to him. Go 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 to the bathroom, and he's, he just gives me a playlist, and he and he's like, oh good, I can I can take a half an hour break. And then the next day, I'm like, dude, what was that nasty remix you played? You know. And same with Manis. When I need something from Manis, I need a speaker. I'm like, I still got your speaker, by the way, Manis. It's yeah, yeah. Right I need over that here if you I want. Need it's been like five years, Peter. I, need that <laughs> I know, dude. I love that. <laughs> you know, I got John's uh, Doombeck. I needed. A, I, I wanted to learn how to play uh, the Doombeck. You know, and, and John's like, dude, I got this sick thing. So. It's like, that's how I feel with all these guys. And it's, it's really cool. So for me, I started because I, I loved, um, I just loved music. I was passionate about it. You know, I bought, I bought one turntable in the beginning because I couldn't afford two. And uh, I, I learned how to scratch because of that. Because all I had was one. I couldn't mix. I was just <laughs> all day. I was just, just queuing songs for about three months. And then I, I could afford to buy the second one. And I started mixing. I worked in every you know, shithole bar you can think of. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I know we only have a limited amount of time, but one day I get a call to work at Avalon and I'm like, are you kidding me? And I thought my friend was punking me, you know? So he's like, no, I got, and, and he, I hung up, he hangs up on me. I call him back. I'm like, dude, this isn't funny. He's like, no, I'm serious. You're going to, you know, you know, you're opening up at Avalon. You're going to play at Avalon. So the rest was history for me, man. I mean, it was like, you know, Manolo, you guys know Manolo. He, Absolutely. he, we became friends. I met him at Europa back in the day and I, I played and, uh, people don't even know what Europa is. What's it, what's, what's it called today? Bijou, Bijou. Bijou, Bijou, right? So we played at Europa. I played at Venue, Aria, Zanzibar. I don't even know what Zanzibar is Roxy. today. Avalon, uh, M80. Uh, you know, the only place I didn't play, when you guys were naming all these, I think I played everywhere uh, except the Roxy. I never played at the Roxy. What? No way. No, well, I that, did that it. That's, that's, a, that's a fact. I never played at the, the Roxy. Before I saw you in the DJ booth. It was, it was, you know, it was the other side of the tracks. I was a Lions <laughs> yes. boy kid, uh, right? So I played at other stuff that Manos had, but at the Roxy, you know, it was like voodoo. John Lyons is like, you can't play at the Roxy. You know, right. we had opportunities, but I was like, all right, so respectfully. And I've been, <laughs> you know, I started retiring in like the late 90s. I tried, <laughs> right? I'm like 98, that's, that's it, I'm out. quitting. And then Aleko, you guys remember Aleko? Aleko pulls me in and I start, I go on the promotion side. And I was like, I, I want a DJ. So I'm back on the, and then 2000, 2000. And, and I just kept on going because like Costa said, you, you can't quit DJing. It's, I don't care if you do it five times a year, once or whatever, you just can't quit DJing. If it's, it, you can't do it. It's like quitting living. Yeah. And those, you guys know what I'm talking about, you know, but you know, I, I, I thought I was going to, you know, I, I, Greek, right? Old school Greek dad. You know, you can't be DJing all your life. You know what I mean? And then it's like, I got to grow up now, be a big boy, get a real job. And meanwhile, I, everyone's going to my dad. Your son did my daughter's wedding. I'm both. And my, father, my son's like, I told him to get into DJ, right? It was me. <laughs> I didn't have that problem. See, my father kept pushing me to be a DJ. I know, so because your dad was a DJ. My dad <laughs> yeah. was like, this isn't a real job. And then he's yeah, like, you know, how much are you charging for a gig? I said, I'm charging this much. He's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, okay, there's, do one more gig. No, but there, There's such a humanistic side to everything you said. Like, you say you do it because it's a passion. You all do it because it's a passion. Okay? People always want music, always need music. You guys know how to put this music that they want together. You love music. People want music. You have a camaraderie between each other. You're all friends. Like, you all help each other. Like this is one of the most humanistic stories I, I've I've been part of, and it's amazing to hear. Like, it's not like I want a job and I need to get paid and I'm gonna DJ. It's like I love music and I'm gonna DJ whether I make money or not. I am friends with these guys because they share this passion, not because I have to be. Um, you know, it, it's just it's really cool to hear this, and and I'm I'm so happy you guys are all here and these stories are amazing. So okay, so now. Let's uh, do a, a, a quick, let's do a quick, like, um, 
Would you guys want to do like a, a favorite jobs or how you guys met type of thing? I, I say we how do we, how you how guys met. Yeah. How, how, did how, I... how we met. Yeah, let's do how we met. Okay. So you guys want to do like a go one by one or you want to do some sort of like free for all? I don't know. I mean, so, let's, let's start, start with George. I, yeah, right, I have, George, a, good, I feel like I have a, good, a good story about how I met everyone. Um, so, I mean, me and Dimitri, we went to Greek school together. So that's how I met Dimitri. And then we became <laughs> friends from that. So we go way back. Um, and then, I mean, I, I remember I wanted to be a DJ when I was like 12 or 13, uh, just like driving in the car with my cousins to go work at their pizza place. They would just play like, uh, you know, Peter's mix CDs. And I was like, wow, this guy's amazing. So like, I, you know, I knew of Peter from then. And I was like, mixed kind of tapes, George, mixed tapes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mixed tapes. <laughs> Nice. And, no, let me, let me get I knew that was going to come up. I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> yeah. That? And like, do you play that? Of course, like, do you have like a tape player? <laughs> of course, I do. Sorry. Yes. I'll, I'll let George finish the story. I'll tell you after going. Um, Peter. Yeah. So, like, that's when I first like wanted to become a DJ, just listening to Peter Mix, you know, just blend songs back and forth. And I was just like, amazed how you could just transition from one song to the other, just, you know, matching key, matching the beat and everything. Um, and, but I actually had a roadblock. My parents didn't want me to start DJing. Um, you know, even though I saved my own money, they wouldn't let me do anything. Mm. Um, and then, you know, I continued to be friends with Dimitri. And then when I graduated high school, my parents were like, all right, well, you got into college. So, you know, you can do the DJ thing if you want. So I partnered up with Dimitri and we had another friend. Um, so the three of us went and bought equipment together. And yeah. that's how we started. So it was yeah, it was, another, it was another Dimitri, right? No, Dino. Uh, Dino. Dino. Yeah, it was like D, two, uh, yeah. D and G or Don't something. Forget about Chris Remo. Yeah, I think it was called D and G. Oh yeah, Wasn't Chris Remo. You guys were like the, you guys were the young crew. It was, it was Remo, Dimitri, uh, Georgie, and another random guy, Dino. I, yeah. Yeah. I I have something to add to George's story. Unless George, you want to keep going, or can no, I you interject? Can go, oh, you can go ahead. Yeah, so specifically, I have a vivid memory of what happened with this. So George and I and the other kid were sitting in my basement, and we always would just listen to Greek music. This is when Kazaa was big for downloading, <laughs> right? And wow. we were downloading and listening to Greek music. And I remember my father came into the basement. It was in the summer, and we're just chilling. And he's like, what are you guys doing? Like, what are you doing? You listen to Greek music all the time. Like, why don't you put this to use? And George probably had thought about DJing before, but for myself, it was like, all right, why don't, why don't we put it to use and become DJs? Like put this music to work. We love it so much. We listen to it. Let's make it into a, into something, something that we do, something like a job. Mm -hmm. So what's crazy about this story is George and I drove to guitar center. And when we walked in, we heard Sepira Sovara playing in the back room. <laughs> We no, walked. no, 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 no. That's no. I think it's the other way around. We were playing Greek music. Oh, and and Peter, and, uh, and Peter was there. Yeah, we were Sorry. testing out stuff, and Peter yeah. was happened to be at Guitar Center the day we decided to like embark on this journey of DJing. Which I don't know if he even remembers this, but he came to us and he's like, "Hey, oh yeah, that's right, George. We were playing." He's like, "Hey, you guys are Greek? Oh, I'm Peter Sularis." And then me and George, <laughs> and me and George left, being like, "Oh my." God, like yeah. we met this guy, he's here. This is a fate, it's real. Fine, man. The Greek DJ Angel. It was it. insane. <laughs> and <laughs> and that's how we actually started. We we invested five hundred dollars each. We bought gear that was completely out of our realm of what we could be able to use. But yeah. we sat on it, we tr we we traded it off every weekend and we practiced. Um, and what was scary is like in the beginning of doing this, we had no events for a year. We were like, oh my God, what did we do? Like we're practicing, we don't, you know, I think this whole, when you're younger, the in, instant success was like, oh my God, uh, aren't we supposed to be getting events here? And we didn't get them, but eventually, obviously they came in. Um, but that's a pretty funny story about how this whole panned out, how Peter actually comes into it randomly I remember at that. Guitar Center. I remember that clear as day. <laughs> I walk into Guitar Center, I don't know, I needed a mic or something and I was in a rush and I run in there and I'm hearing Greek music and they're scratching it and I'm like, what are these dudes doing? I'm like, you guys Greek or did someone leave the CD in there? You know? Yeah. Don't so you guys like, know yeah. that you're not supposed to talk to strangers? I know. <laughs> right. You see Peter come and you go the other way. And I think I'll just add one more thing because I know other people want to talk. Is like, I think George and I are like, 
I would say the younger, like the second or third, whatever generation you want to call it in this DJ lineup, because for us, like we grew up listening and watching everybody here. Right. And what I think is like, we, at least for myself, I, I can see myself trying to piece together different aspects of what these guys did to try to make myself better. And like, for example, like if I'm going to say, so Peter, Peter is uh, like, he takes, he takes risks DJing. Like he'll play and he'll do stuff that you shouldn't do, but he does it and it comes out seamless. Like and in big rooms live, he'll be cutting and doing stuff that amazes other guys watching because they would never take that risk. Guys like the Freakas, I remember in 2005 going to Rumor, as far as like mixing, they can mix at a club and it sounds CD quality. Like it, there's no mess ups. It was like in and out, perfect transitions. And it, it, it was like a, the most clean mix you could ever hear. And then Thrilla, for Thrilla, what I, I think look up to him most is he puts the most effort into remixing his own. Like as far as playing original music, nobody has more. So like he could play an entire night with his own stuff. And I think people don't or underestimate how much time it puts into engineering your own music because I don't do it. I don't have the time. But this guy remixes more than I've ever seen in my life. So myself and George, we've seen all of this stuff and try to like sort of incorporate it into our own businesses and our own DJing skills. And uh, I appreciate all of you guys for just being there. Awesome. Wow. That's yeah. deep right Sorry. there. Awesome. Deep. I, I, deep. I, I love it. Like, I, love I, it. Top, that's, that's, I can't top that. I won't talk anymore. Yeah. I just wanted I, <laughs> I, 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 there's, there's, so done, many, buddy. there's so many things that, that I'm trying to piece together too hearing you. Yeah. I needed to get that out because I just really feel like we're the younger ones. We just looked up to you. We went on gigs with you. We listened to you at the clubs and like everything that you do, we try to, to replicate and mend it into a way that is us, right? But without all of you guys like we would not be what we are today so it's hard for me when people ask me like hey should i book dj thriller for my wedding it's like he taught me so obviously right <laughs> he taught me these things so if you you can't even do this comparison thing because i i look up to these guys and 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 even like like costa b too if someone ever asked me for a full greek event like you're my go-to I don't want to do full Greek events, but that's your forte. Like there's a part of the market that that's what you guys do. You guys have the most Greek music. You have the most history in true Greek music than anyone I've ever met. So it makes sense for people to, to kind of know that. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's I'll awesome. just add to that. Like every single one of you have helped me and Dimitri and in one way or another, like I just, I just got a memory of working at, I was a, I'll actually continue about continue on about how I met everyone. I was working at a pizza place, Captain's Pizza Swamp Scott, shout out to them. And <laughs> the manager was uh, his cousins with with uh, Greco. So that's how I met Greco. He used to come into Captain's. And I think ah. that, that's also how I met uh, John um, uh, and Thrilla too. I think that's how oh. I met the three of you guys. And I specifically remember asking Chris, what's the Q button on the CD player do? <laughs> and like just like chris just is like laughing in my face and being like oh maybe you should go buy speakers first or like something mm -hmm. like that <laughs> yeah, dude, really? yeah. Sound like me. but just <laughs> you know like that's it's just like a simple thing but i was so new to it i mean i think this is before i even bought equipment i was just curious to like figure out stuff and i just you know just started asking questions but every single one of you have helped me like so much just it's like, I forget now just talking, you know, having Dimitri say that whole thing about starting and, you know, it's like the simple things that, you know, like right now, I, I don't think twice about it because it's second nature to me about DJing. Like someone starting out really appre appreciates that. And, yeah. you know, you know George, all, all... I thought about when you guys, you guys gave me your first mix CD with the little penguin on there. <laughs> the Linux penguin. Breaking the ice. Linux yeah, penguin. Yeah, yeah. Breaking the ice. And uh, I remember listening to it and I was like, oh man, these guys got it. They're gonna they're gonna do it. Like I just remember hearing, I'm like, oh, they, they they got this, man. They just started and 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 they 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 know where they're going, you know. So I remember that. Yeah. I mean, even from my perspective, um, the way I phrase it in my mind is like it's almost like a lineage of like 
All right, there was Peter who started out, you know, and then, you know, in, in my eyes, after that was like, you know, Chris and John, who I always used to see out. And then I learned from them, I because I, you know, I sat down, I mean, the core of my knowledge came from, you know what, I think maybe at one point I would have probably learned it by myself, but like sitting with Chris and John and having all that, all that knowledge that they brought from those years, doing it since they were 16, because I probably didn't start till I was like, you know, in my early 20s. And just gave me such a big jump on like, all right. I was like, Chris, I'm like, like how do I get matched these things? He's like, oh, you know, 1% pitch is one BPM. And I'm like, dude, changed my life. That one little <laughs> piece of information there. I was like, holy crap. Now I can just mix 93 and 98, just put 5%. Because, you know, my background too is I'm an engineer. So like, I'm trying to figure this stuff out as I'm doing it. I'm like, whoa. So it, at one point it, when it all clicked for me, and then, and then, so then when Dimitri and George came, came along, I was like, all right, you know, I learned, I have this knowledge and I'm going to pass it down, you know? And it's like, it's like teaching each other, like, like we're Jedi's like, all right, this is, this is how, this is how, this is how it was done back then. And then, and then these people are still active. It's not like, you know, Chris and John just kind of disappeared and I'm taking over. We were just all like next in line, learning that, that knowledge that was probably discovered by like, you know, Peter, like I remember listening to Peter and he's mixing Greek music like you would mix American hip hop, like matching beats. Like who's doing that? You know? Yeah, that's that, that kind stuff. of that that's and that was a lot of my influence, you know, and Chris probably could talk more about yeah, it. Yeah, really, I mean, look, I'm hearing this and I just like thinking about thinking about my story. And my first memory is you, Peter, my cousin John, because my cousin John, his older brother Mike was friends with Peter and Mike would always have these mixtapes from Peter, freestyle mixtapes. And, and John would be like, yo, I got, I got a Peter Solaris mixtape, Mike got it. And we'd listen to it, I'm like, oh man, that's awesome. You know, and we didn't, we didn't think of anything other than, other than like, wow, that's cool. We got a DJ's mixtape. And then, and then the Goya dances, we started getting older and we'd go to these Goya dances and you know, Peter would DJ the Goya dances, Johnny, Chris and Nick would DJ, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so those are Thriller's cousins, and um, so and I remember me and John. We were John, yeah, John and I were always into music. We went to, we met in Greek school too, and and that's and and through church we knew Peter and and, and Thriller, and um, but John and I were always into music, and um, I just remember we'd always we'd always be talking about you know new new tapes that came out, and and then like when CDs came out, we rushed to Strawberries to buy our first CD. Robert and then just hearing, Strawberries. and then and then hearing, you know, Peter and 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 Johnny and, and and Chris and Nick DJing these Goya dances, we were like, wow, man, why don't why don't we start DJing too? Like we we love music, we we can do this, and and luckily for us, you know, Peter and the guys were, were so willing to help us out. You know, we would roadie for them, we would just watch, you know, watch what they were doing, listen to their mixes, listen to them on the microphone. And, um, and just, you know, over time, you get your opportunity to, to get your first gig, you know, and, and then it just grows from there. But I mean, I have so many good memories from, from, from those days being, you know, 14, 15 years old and, and even going to the clubs, like that was huge. I mean, Peter, you got us in a few times. Johnny got us in a few times. We shouldn't sneak, have been in there. We shouldn't have been in there. We were I used to sneak old. everybody in, man. That, that's, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm thinking back memory lane right now. I remember that story clear as day with, with George and Dimitri. Um, you know, I remember Yanni and, and, and Thanos, obviously. And what I, what I would do as soon as I saw another kid, you know, primarily, they were primarily Greek. I would just help a brother out. You know what I mean? Yanni was like, I want to learn. And I would say, and I was, I was a little tough love, you know, like if someone said to me, how much do I get to roadie? I would say, you're not the right guy. You're fired. And they'd be like, what are you talking about? I'm like, dude, this ain't about the money. You know, if you see how I started and where I started and what I had to do and, and, and the dives I worked in and the gunshots that went off in these places, <laughs> I did it for them. And I'm not exaggerating. I mean, I'm talking people hitting the floor, you know, like crazy stuff in land, man. I mean, we, you know, I was doing yeah. underground parties with keggers and, and, you know, and, and uh, I don't know, that's another story. Right. But anyway, so it was, it was Yanni. It was Johnny. It was Thanos. The same thing. I forget where I met Thanos. But Thanos wanted to learn, and I said, you got to carry my records. And then when I saw that they were there for the right reasons, I put everything I could into them. 
so they can be successful because I don't know. I just liked it, you know, and the same thing, you know, and then I'd find out like, I, I hung out with Mike Paragias, Chris's cousin. He was, he was one of my best friends. I grew up together. And then I used to see Chris and Costa and John and Thriller and everyone, you know, you guys weren't coming to the club yet. Uh, uh, Manis and, and Dimitri, but the <laughs> other guys were coming to Avalon. I would hook up everyone I could on the guest list. Yep. I would go to the front door and drag people in if I had to, because they didn't have IDs. And I'd be like, no, he's my boy. He's well, my boy. And I mean, I just. Well, Peter, we, we had, we had that connection at the door with Mr. Steve Delios. Steve school. Delios. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Steve I would, Delios. You, would take, you take 20 or 50 bucks to get you right in. Until, <laughs> until I pointed you out, he would, he would tax you for three or four gigs. And then you, you had paid your dues. And right, then you right. were good. Right, right. You know, but. Thriller, um, remember your fr the first there was a night at Zanzibar that you that you were th that you were doing, Peter, with with the crew. That was my and first. Thrill, I remember that was the first night. We we were like, "Yo, come with us, come with us." I was like was sixteen years the... old. I was sixteen years old, and I was at my aunt's house at a, at a Christmas party. And they're like, "We're going to the club tonight." I'm like, "A club?" I'm like, "On a Christmas I barely, night." I barely go to a high school dance. They're like, "No, we're going to a nightclub." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> they're like, "All right, just get ready." I'm like, "What? Do I, what do I wear?" I'm like, "All right, you <laughs> go there." It, now, I don't even know how I looked. I probably looked like I was 12, right? Chris, John, and then his cousin, John, we all jump in the car, you know, listening to Euro music going in there. I remember the, you know, the thing is with me, like, everything is, is associated with the song. So, like, I knew this, like, I was a member. It was like, ah, this is your night. It was playing the Euro song. <laughs> oh, man. Like, we're driving right on Star Wars Drive. We go to, <laughs> we're going into Zanzibar. We go in. And I don't know if it was packed, but it was, I just felt so small. I was like, oh my God, this is like, this is where all these other cool people come. I'm like, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to be. And like, I'm sitting, Peter's playing, Peter's playing, um, don't sweat the technique, I think, the mix you'd play all the time. You remember like, that? You were mixing. <laughs> you got a good memory. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In my head, everything associated with like the songs that were playing at the time. I remember, I remember going there. And then like the next day, I think it was like on a Sunday, right? I go to school the next day. I'm like, walk into class. I'm like, they're like, where are you at? at a nightclub last night i'm like <laughs> you know and that was part of the greek culture it's like you're greek you go to greek clubs you know and, and you know and, and it all played in the part with the music and it was like you know peter would have his peter would have the nights you know obviously there would be the big you know easter nights and christmas nights at the roxy like huge influence over i think my development or our development as a community is like those nights like, oh yeah you know i can give so, a yeah. I want to give a big shout out to, to Johnny Magris, DJ Yanni, um, who was Peter's boy. The three of them, there was uh, two Greeks and a Spaniard you guys used to do, right? Yeah, was it three Spaniard. Greeks? No, three Greeks and a three Spaniard. Spaniard. The tape I have actually, oh, I that's why I have it tonight. It's funny that you mentioned that is Sularis, Yanni, Thanos, and Manolo. Wow. Yeah. So the first, I remember, so me and Chris uh, and his cousin and my brother, like we went out, I remember there was like um, a thing at like maybe the expo center or something. It was like a big like DJ, like PA system, like music equipment extravaganza thing, right? And I remember seeing a commercial for it on TV and that was right around the time when we saw Peter and his cousins and, well, not his cousin, but like uh, Thrillist cousins and all the, the boys like DJ and Goy dances and we're like, yo we got to go to this place and get some dj equipment we didn't even know but like we knew we needed a mixer like that's about it <laughs> and my dad threw in money for the mixer yeah yeah. it's like how much you need <laughs> 100 bucks yeah yeah and uh and then we had like my dad's old like you know big like stereo receiver and an old turntable from my uncle and our first gig i think was a, an ahepa dance at the knights of columbus or something like that <laughs> but what i can tell you is uh i remember so we started i was 13 i think um and i remember the first time i ever spun at a nightclub was dj yanni johnny was djing at one of the places in the alley the alley cat yeah like the smaller one right i remember it was like the he was playing fire and affair and like that kind of stuff you know I was 14, stuff, yeah. and those were the days like you said like you try to sneak everybody in right and like so like we were literally like he had like six kids that were like 14 to 16 with him <laughs> First, he was like carrying like one record you know what i mean <laughs> my roadies you know and uh i remember like he let me play he let me mix a song it was you know i was 14 in boston and, and like the middle of the, i didn't know what i was doing like i mean i knew how to mix because we had some stuff at home but I remember putting the needle on the record in my hand. You were trembling? <laughs> John, I remember that mix. It was the perfect mix. It was the perfect mix. I remember that. 
It was great. Wow. It was. Yeah, it was. He hard. did it. He so, did it. <laughs> that sounds like it. You know, I forget what it was, but it was far like, an affair in uh, the Ace of Base that uh, it was like that. All that she wants. Beat. Yeah. Like, na, 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 na. Another one that was like that too, but. Um, if, but then if I... the funny thing, the funny thing that night I remember, my brother had a pager, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I remember my mom paging him to like, call her to get home. Nine one one, ella spiti. This gentleman, this is uh, you know, for me listening to you guys because I, it's go ahead. I got I, okay. So <laughs> just, ahead, just I gotta, uh, uh, I have so many freaking stories right now to, to talk about I'm, each and every person in here but i just i have to mention this because it's it's going to eat me alive so chris and john you guys just were talking about your starts and your beginnings so think about that moment all right and then think about this all right i'm a guy who's always appreciated music i love music i was actually a, a professional music producer for a for a web startup so like I'm not a DJ, but like, I know music and I love music. And, 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 you know, if, if I say something, uh, you could say, all right, at least he has an educated, uh, um, knowledge of it. I went out one night, long story short, and we weren't supposed to go to this place. Uh, but we were stuck. Something happened. We didn't know whatever. We're like, all right, let's just pop into venue. Uh, I, I, you know, we have nothing else to do. Let's just, let's just go to venue. Some weird random night. I don't know what it is. Let's go. I go in and I'm like, I'm, I'm not into it tonight. Like, I don't want to drink. I don't, I, I don't feel it. The music starts and the music's pretty good. And I'm like, yeah, this is good. This is good. This is good. All right. Get me a drink, man. Give me a drink. All right. One drink. Music is so good. Give me a drink, man. A couple more drinks. I'm dancing. I'm dancing. I get up on the freaking tables and I am jamming. I am having the best time of my life. And I am whoever the freaking DJs are, man. I'm going to shake their hands. I don't give a shit. Forget the Greek nights and all this stuff. These are the DJs. <laughs> End of the night comes. I'm drunk. I had the best time of my life. I'm grabbing all my friends. I'm like, I got to talk to these DJs. I never talked to a DJ that I didn't know before. I never cared. I'm like, I got to talk to these DJs. I got to shake their hands. I walk up. Chris Bada, your big smile. <laughs> John. Speedy Zako's there with a headset on, and I'm like, what the hell are you guys doing here? They were DJing a night that I had no idea they were DJing, and I had, honest to God, the best time of my life because of that music. And I, I was like... I remember that, man. I remember you dancing on the speaker some night. You go to John, I'm like, yo, man, that's... Is that Ari? <laughs> little do you guys, little do you guys know that Ari would do that almost every night. Every night. <laughs> no, no, no. Absolutely not. I had... I literally had the best night with that music, and I literally said to my friends, I don't do this, because I usually know the DJs. Like, I usually do my own Greek nights. But I have to go and shake these guys' hands. They gave me the best night. And it was Chris and John. I remember that night because that was weird. We've ever done. Like that was, that was, that was to me, that was one of my favorite gigs yeah. of all time. Like it, it, was, it, it was like one of those magic moments. Let me yeah, tell we you were playing, we played music from across all genres. That yes, that's, that's why I love it. Was just, it was a free for all. 80s international reggae house. It we was, ended it off with Juicy by Biggie. That's that was good. the last song of the night. You I guys had were the pioneers to and Christoph. Christoph was there. I remember Christoph, the yo 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 guy on yo, the microphone. Yo, yo. The best, the best he night. He was promoting ever. that night, and he goes, "Hey, you play that, you play that song one more time." He like, he, he like, he had never heard of it before, and I, and I, was, <laughs> I like, just I kept like, like last minute man. for that day too. We didn't even know. I think it was like Sharok's. It, it was after 9 11. Like, it was like a few weeks uh, after 9 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think you guys had some Guns and Roses in there, like everything. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Well, and I was like, well, this is the best. If, if I can add to what you guys are saying, just listening to each of you individually and as a group right now re really goes to show like what went on behind the scenes. And for us on the other end, as the promoters, the marketers, as Greek Boston and as Sigma Entertainment at different levels, you know, we were the you know, you were the reason why we were inspired to book nights and take the risk with nightclubs and say, you know what, give us these nights because we can fill the room because we've got the talent. And it was all about the, the DJ. Risk. We took the risk with you guys and we put you uh, in the team with us to create these successful nights that you guys moved the not just the room, but you moved the moment. 
Like we can't tell you how many nights we've probably interacted with people on the way out that you are the reason why many folks that ran through these nights, thousands and thousands of people have memories because of you. And all right, so Ari took a lot of pictures of those photo galleries for the memories, but in essence, those moments that were created by the team that's here today and the others that are not with us, which hopefully will be with us at some point in the future, was a pivotal moment in people's experiences during that era of the 90s to the 2000s. And it was, if you think about it, looking back, we had something going on collectively every weekend or multiple nights of the week, there was something going on between all of us, whether it was a weekly night, a long weekend holiday, a special occasion, or pre and after parties with concerts, when the concert, you know, big names would come in, we do pre parties, after parties. If you think about that collectively, that never happens in our time today. But just listen to you guys, and I hope our audience really understands that back then, think about all the effort and time and, and devotion and dedication and sacrifices that yourselves put into this to create nights that people will probably always talk about for the rest of their lives. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, I, mean, I have a good story. Uh, Chris uh, Chris wants to chime in. I think a little, remember the, uh, a little back story of how when we started and officially teamed up with Spiro, me, you, and Spiro, and we, we were like, he was like bringing DJs in from New York. He was having his one people come and do one nights, but he didn't have, you know, a core of like a team. And, and we came in together and Chris can speak about this even more, how we like, all right, all right, let's, let's, let's do this. Like we used to know how it used to be done, how Peter used to do his nights or, um, you know, how, how it was done say you know, in the nineties, we would be, you know, make some mix CDs and, and, and uh, you know, do nights where like, we, you know, now, now use the internet where it's like, let's put out, you know, teaser online. We're gonna put out brand new mix CD coming down and get your copy. Um, even, even we sat down one time and we, we, we went through all the old music and said, all right, these, these songs we're gonna bring in, in into the, with the new stuff, you know? Yeah, I feel like Pete, Peter, you might not know how much you've influenced everybody. I, I mean, I was going to say he, he, he the, really the nostalgia did. that we have growing up, you know, like you said, you're a little bit older. And when you were DJing, man, like, and we'd go to all your, all your nights, like those big nights at Avalon, man, those holiday nights where there'd be like 2000 Greeks. Insane. Just, Imagine. I mean, man, I mean, that, those are, those are permanently ingrained mm -hmm. in my memory and just the amount of people that we met, the amount of people that we had fun with, the, the awesome music that you that you exposed us to. I mean, those memories will never go away. And 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 to Thriller's point, we were trying to replicate that for the younger generation when we started DJing these bigger Greek nights. We were like, we gotta get that same feel. We gotta get the same feel that yeah, and I, I used to used love to watching you guys uh carry it on and do it, you know, and once in a while I would come out, you know what I mean? Like I said, I'd, and, and, and listen to you guys. And, 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 and I just was, I would just kind of be, you know, just proud and just like, you well, know, and, that, just, and that was, that was what it was. I felt even doing it. I felt we were carrying that tradition. Absolutely. That tradition of like, like those big Greek nights and, and, and from the North shore. Cause you know, we're, you know, we're all from Lynn and stuff too. It was like, you kind of felt like, all right, this is, this is, we're them kids from Lynn. Yeah. That, you know, we, we, we become DJ. We're all like DJs and like people would probably make fun of like, why is every kid from Lynn like a DJ? But at the end of the day, we're, 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 we control on the scene. We're out there playing the music, you know, now, you know, and we came from like, all right, these, you know, these little hood rats from Lynn. And you now, and for some reason we're playing the music for them now. You know? It worked. It worked, yeah. man. We would just, I don't know, at the right place at the right time. People always ask me, you know, why can't we put 2000 Greeks in a room again? And uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I've got my theories, but I it, think it we does. Can. It, it gives me um, it gives me chills to remember those nights. You know what I mean? Like I remember those nights like it, it was just surreal. I mean, you know, working at a club like Avalon and, um, you know, the, the Greek nights were phenomenal. Right. They, they used to have a Yeti Nos play. And then I was just biting at the bit to get on. I was like, like every Greek DJ is just waiting to get on when the band stops. And I'm like, come on, come on, I'm ready, I'm ready. And I had my record already queued up and I'm going to play this and I'm going to go, you know, I think I'm going to do that. And, and you would just die and just get on there. But I remember even when I was a resident at Avalon doing regular nights on a Friday night, I would test the vibe to see, I would have a Greekometer, 
<laughs> so I would pop on a little bit of, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, whether uh, it you was... would play uh, uh, Panesto Gabriole. And you would play... <laughs> yeah, Gabriole. Oh, Mr. Chaimuk, right? Mr. Chaimuk. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I would just like test it. Range. Wow. And I would just, just play a little bit. And, and then you would see 25% of that room just kind of move. And, go, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. and then I knew well, that I knew they were there. Oh, you yeah. knew they were there. That's awesome. Yeah, I knew no, they were man. there. And I, I would keep on playing music, you know, and I would just, I remember one night, you guys know Louis, right? Louis Dacoyanis. He got me into the scene. He was the original, that flyer I sent out last night, the sixth annual event. He did the, the first chancel. annual, right? Wow. So he started promoting and he was doing him at, uh, he wasn't doing him at nightclubs. He was doing him at Mosley's. I don't even know. I, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Mosley yeah, on the Charles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one night he's, he ends up being the general manager of Avalon. I'm playing music. It's two o'clock. We shut down. You know, I got some drinks in me. We're all having a good time. I stopped playing Zibikis up on the, uh, no, throughout the whole nightclub. And he's, and he's like, dude, it's pounding right now. And there's cops up and down the street on Lansdowne and you get busted. You get written up. You lose your license for a weekend. That cost them thousands of dollars. Right. So Louis like, just play it up on the balcony. Remember the balcony up top where the yes. VIP section. So I stopped playing up there. So all the Greeks, they stop migrating up there. And that place <laughs> could probably hold about 300 sardines up there. And we have 300 people. And then, and then those two big booths on the floor, those people, so there's about 400 kids there, you know, just jamming. And next thing you know, it's like 2.30 and I'm just playing music like it's one o'clock in the morning, right? Just the yeah. Greeks are there. And all of a sudden, a steady like punches me on the side. And he's like, what the F do you think you're doing? And I'm like, how did this guy get in here? He's a cop, right? So he's like, shut this music down. I'm going to let, you know, write you guys up. So Louis runs up and he's like, I told you to shut the music off. That's it, Solaris. I'm sick and tired of you. You're fired. He's, and we get into this big blowout fight. And I'm looking at Louis and I'm like, he's acting, right? <laughs> he just told me to keep on playing music. So the cop, he's, you know, I shut the music off. Oh, everyone's just kind of like, oh my God. Because we all knew each other, right? So the cop leaves. Everyone's just kind of looking around. They're grabbing their jackets. And Louis comes from downstairs. He goes, he left. Yeah. <laughs> and we just kept on going due to like four in the morning. Oh, and that man. stuff you can't, you can't do today. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was just nonstop. And when I felt the vibe of Greeks being in that room, whether it was a Friday or a Saturday night, and it wasn't a Greek night, I would influence it and just play Greek music. <laughs> and I would train the Americans, right? The people like the English stuff that this is a song. This is, this is, this is what it is. So it was it was crazy for me, and it was good I, to I was see all you guys there. Oh, sorry, good. Yeah, it was uh, just good. It was just crazy. So uh, kind of similar to that, I remember Manny Manolo was the first person in the Boston area to ever play um, Macarena. <laughs> played like that original original version, and yeah. my daughter is like doing the Macarena. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, when the, when only when only sexy girls were doing the Macarena back then. I remember that. <laughs> Wow. And it's like those were days where you could just play whatever you felt the vibe was and didn't yeah, matter. Had, well, the song or Boston not. also had that big international. Boston had that big international. Scene. Yeah, yeah. I think cool. that yeah. Greeks kind of just fit in there. Where oh, it was like, it was an easy segue. Yeah. yeah, it was easy. So it would be like you play Arabic music, you play Greek music, you play Spanish, you know some. Um, and I I would get picture this music. right. You guys can all relate to this. Your your your, your room is packed. You got 1,500 people bopping, and you got this kid coming out of left field, and he's throwing a CD. He's like, play number five, play number five. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, like, dude. Oh, I was God. like, dude. And he's like, trust me, play number five. So I'd, I'd put it on. I'd cue it up. And sometimes you'd be like, oh, this is nasty. I got to play this. And sometimes it sounded like, if you think about Macarena, it sounds like folky. It's really not thumping <laughs> bass, right? It's like, oh, Macarena, right? So that that was my experience with Macarena. I remember that. Someone comes up and he's like, play number six, play number six, but you got to put it on. And I'm like, dude, he's like, trust me, play this song. And I put it on and everyone's like, hurt. And I'm like, where the hell are these guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're all kids from college. They go back to, you know, their homeland. Yeah. And then come the, the fall, they're back. So I broke so many records doing that. You know, the other one was... um uh what's what do you call it uh step off the train da, da. oh yeah girl. right uh, i come back from mykonos everything but the girl, yeah, uh, but the girl yeah. right yeah. i come back girl, from, yeah. now i heard that in mykonos yeah. and i was like if you listen to the song it's again it's it's really chill yeah. right yeah. but it's dun, 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 right and 
I'm in Mykonos watching what it's doing to people. And I'm like, I got to get this. And this, you can't get an MP3. I got to go find the vinyl now. I go to <laughs> Athens. I'm going to a record store. I don't have, there's no smartphones where you can record it. There's no Shazam. This is a pain in the ass to get that song. So I go to the record store. I, I, I'm singing it. I'm humming it. He's like, ah, sort of listen. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. So finally, he's like, is this the one? I'm like, that's it. So I grabbed that song and, and some other ones. I land in, in Boston, like on a Wednesday and Thursday, Manny's playing at Avalon. I fly into Avalon, right? I'm just excited to drop this record. I go in, now it's me at least. So it's not like some dude going, play number five, play number five, right? <laughs> so I go, Manny, drop this song. So he goes, all right, puts it on and the place loses it. And Manny's like, I'm not giving you this record back. I'm like, dude, I'm playing tomorrow. I need that record. He's like, fuck you, I ain't giving this record back, right? So stuff like that, man, yeah. it's, you know. I mean Boston was a special that, place, man. It was a special place in Boston at that time. Oh, yeah. I, mean, just, I, I mean, just too, to man. That, it was like the king of the international stuff, man. Like, yeah. I remember M80 or uh, Paradise in the back, man. Like, that was, those were, like, he, he just dropped stuff that you never heard. And I'm like, everybody, they were all, like, literally all of Europe and all the Middle East was there. You know what I mean? <laughs> But th that that scene in Boston, like, w w yeah. even if it exists, we're never gonna experience what it was like at no, that I was, point. Yeah, it was. I think. I mean, even uh, from from the Greek night experience, I think there was a lot of people that were were going to. Well, of recently, say the past ten years, not back maybe in Peter's day, but like maybe a little bit. But I think it got so more frequent that people were going to Greece and hearing the new new music in Greece. So that put a lot of pressure on us DJs here to be like, we got to play these new tracks. Like Peter back in the day, maybe you can get away with playing an old track. Like you didn't have that turnover that we had. That's right. It's, it became, you had to have the new tracks that were hot that summer and you had to play them, you know, at, at your next night. Yeah, you, had you guys had, had more pressure. Now, so we knew yeah. it. You had more pressure because the internet dictated what to play. Well, Whereas yeah. back so in the 90s, like, I dictated what to play. Just, yeah, exactly. Your tape, your tape was the internet. What was the hot song was on your tape. Oh yeah, man. So for us, we were had we were like, all right, what's the hot song in Greece? Now, not only the hot song, what's the hot remix in Greece? And right. like, and then we then we we had to get to keep track of all that, plus the you know American music and the hot track. So we had a lot of pressure on us to bring that vibe. And not only that, we were releasing our, our CDs, not only passing them out, they were online going to thousands. I don't want to say millions, but all around the world, people were like, oh, who are these guys making these CDs in Boston? So we had a. I, we had our game had to be like top notch at all times, and then even live too. We had to like, all right, we had to really program what we're playing because it was just so much more music out there. You know, actually, Thriller, you you bring up a point that I want to bring up something about. It's like when we were doing this back in the day, like we had to spend a substantial effort in music and learning things and everything. Where nowadays because of the access of the internet and all the music that's out there readily available, I think like anyone can become a DJ. Technically speaking, the hardware that you need to become a DJ is nothing. Like you can go out and do an event with like very limited in, uh, investment, but like we were forced, like George and I were burning CDs like every, so we started in the CD realm of DJing, well, not yeah. so much like turntablism, but you know, like we were burning CDs, labeling those, making yep. sure like we had the right music, the right remixes. And it wasn't like we really had to think about what to play because you couldn't just bring it all. Whereas now we bring yes. terabytes of music and it's like you play whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think I it's- remember, I, remember, I remember Chris Chris told me like I was to BPM songs. He, he taught me with a stopwatch. Yeah. And like, you know, all right, this is how you do it. Count to 30. Uh, right, yeah. stop. Come on, come on. I, you know, yeah. I taught minus, Johnny, minus Johnny two. taught Chris, and Chris yeah. taught you. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah. Minus two, and then, all right, that's, that's the BPM. Right? Minus two, yeah. All my records uh, still uh, have a BPM on them, and I got hundreds, thousands of records, yeah. man. They still yeah. got all numbers. I, I, I remember that, and I was like, and then make a duplicate of that CD. Yes. Yeah. And that, was, what if you... and that right there, Chris, <laughs> you telling me that, I was like, damn, that's it. That's how these DJs were doing it all this time. They had dupes. I knew it like I was like I was figuring it out and like I'm listening to the songs I know what the, I know what the songs are but I'm like how the hell are these guys doing it and once Chris told me like yeah I make dupes of these I make dupl duplicate CDs so I have two CDs I can go back and forth I'm like holy crap <laughs> like wow I don't even know if he invented it but I'm like this is so it was tough for me and John because and probably you to some extent too Peter because we started off with all vinyl and then we had to make transition to CD because you couldn't oh, yeah. find vinyl anymore yeah oh, so yeah. 
So we we would lug crates of records and cases of CDs with us. You, you, yeah, you know, I never, just... I never, I went through that transition from vinyl to CD, and I never trusted the CD, right? And I was like, I don't know about this CD thing. And then, uh, and then I was all CD. And then MP3s, I was like, I don't trust this MP3 thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I remember, I remember, you know, trying to get a song back then. Life is life. Remember that song? Oh, right? Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Life that was just is a, life. A, a floor oh, pack. But guess what? I didn't have it on vinyl, so I got it from. I don't know if it was uh, Eddie K or, or Manolo and they gave it to me or Rafi from Boston. They gave it to me on a tape. So I had the tape deck at Avalon. No, this was at the hub club. This was pre and um, I had it play and pause. So I'm playing it on a tape. You know, <laughs> yeah. you just, I couldn't mix yeah. it, but that song didn't need a mix, but I had a tape deck to play a song because oh. I couldn't get it anywhere else. You yeah. did what you had to do. You know, that's that right. struggle just doesn't exist today. That's nah. the crazy thing. You know, you know what? Like, so you, you think like you can just find any song nowadays. And for the most part, you can. Like, I remember one day I was over at Chris's, like, I don't know, a year or two. And we're just thinking, like, reminiscing, like, oh, you know, like if you keep all your records, like, oh, you can just dig through and like pull them back up. But we kind of got our fix by just going to YouTube and just <laughs> typing. Yeah. Hey, let's yeah. listen to this song for you know 10 seconds and then, you know what that's <laughs> that's that's good but also your audience like i was saying before the audience is accustomed to that too so that right, 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 right. they they're, 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 they're looking at you as a dj and be like all right you got even more than that because yeah. i can go on the internet and i hear this guy doing it and i'm like yeah you saying, like what's funny is like there are a few you know rare things though that were so rare, you know, that maybe would just released on a 12 inch, you know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah, I, I remember I've been searching for maybe 20 years now for this Groove is in the Heart remix and I can't find it. <laughs> I have, I have two copies. I one, one is sealed, John. What's that? I have two copies. One of them is sealed. It's the one that breaks down acapella? Yeah. Yeah, that's like my favorite mix. We used to wow. play it every I'm just year. messing with you, dude. I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like there are these rare things that I might have it. I might have it. I don't know. You probably do. Nobody uploaded it. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, you you know what? I, I I'm thinking about again like tapes influences and and it jogged my memory. So there was one influence, one big influence on me was Peter. He was the the the, the number one where where I, I just studied what he would do. Um, but then we're talking about the, the, the big nights at Avalon in the Roxy, right? The other huge influence on me was DJ Yorgo, the, oh, yeah. yeah. the way he mixed Greek music I had never yeah. heard before. And he would just do a whole night of Greek music, just, just flowing. And I was like, whoa. And then I remember one summer, John's dad had gone to Monambrasia, comes back with this tape. And John was like, yo man, you gotta listen to this tape. So we were listening to the tape. So I'm like, yo, is this DJ Yorko? Like <laughs> flawless Greek mixes. It was a 90 minute tape and, and flawless. And I was like, dude, how do we, how, how do we do that? Like, right. you I know, because- Driving into Boston. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, how do, how do we even do that? How are they mixing like this? And I was like, man, that, I was like, DJ Yoda will make this, man. This sounds like DJ Yoda. What are they doing? Like, how do we figure this out? Because back then we weren't mixing Greek. And, yeah. and, and we, I think we put like a, a, a limitation on us thinking that you can't mix Greek. Yeah. Um, and I always know, thought that we too. Were like, it was, you know, it was irregular to us. We didn't think about it that way. Um, and, and then when we heard it could be done, and then Peter started doing it more, and they, those guys started it doing doing more. And the more we listened to DJ Giorgio, and the more music, Greek music we got, then we started. And then when when the Denon CD players came out, and we could actually put CD, Greek CDs in them, it was like, whoa, I can mix Greek music. I, I never thought of that before. I, I thought it was like some far fetched idea to mix Greek music. When when I was young at that age, it just I you know you were used to mixing house, hip hop. You know, I, I mean, and, and, and to, to think that, whoa, I can do the same thing with Greek music now. And I can even do like these cool blends. Like when Peter started like transitioning from like Greek to, to, to American stuff. Like, oh man, I never thought that's, of that before. That's, that's cool. cool. Yeah. And, I, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you for my, my, influ my influence is that being Greek and living in America, that, that was one of my goals was like, look, I'm Greek. I love Greek music. I also love hip hop and, and, and pop and, and house and all this. I like to play them together. And like, that was my thing. It's like, 
not only remixing, but like just even at, at a gig, you're like going back and forth and you're blending. And Peter used to do it all the time. He used to like punch in like, you know, little acapella sections and songs. Um, you know, I, I vividly, I can remember like CDs, uh, uh, tapes that I would get and he would do it. I'm like, that. that's but, and it, it was just part of that experience of growing up in America and also being Greek. It's like, you want to play those songs together or mix them together. You know, yeah, and you know what, bro, I, I'm up. thinking I'm thinking about what Dimitri said earlier on tonight. He said when he was studying all our different, you know, styles, and, and, and he commented on how he thought the Freakas had, you know, clean mixes. That's always something that, it, it's funny because I, that's something that I always noticed when I was like, man, that mix was clean. I didn't realize subconsciously I was being influenced the whole time. I was like, I want to sound clean like that. That's yeah. Like, oh, I want to sound clean. Like, you don't even know it's happening. It you was know? weird. And, and that's like, funny that that's what you noticed. Oh. And, and John, I think you felt the same way because when we oh, would go out to clubs and we would hear, it doesn't matter, Greek, whatever music, but we would hear DJs. And at the end of the night, we're like, yo, man, that DJ was clean. Yeah, you know? know? Like the music or not. It wasn't and even, it, <laughs> like, that it, was, was just, it was like well, separating the technical from the yeah 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 and i and i always respected feet i always respected peter for taking the the, the risks i was like i don't have the i don't have the guts to do that i want to screw something up because i was always obsessed with being so clean yeah, yeah. and peter would be like tick, 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 tick. yeah he'd be like punching that play button on the denims or ding ding, ding living sampling yeah, I, kept like, punching it in I wish i had the guts to do that but i never had the guts to do it i want to screw up if if i can just chime in everything you guys have mentioned about the effort, the the conscious uh, decisions to do things, whatever you guys did on our end worked because all the nights that we've done together, collectively, indirectly, directly, there hasn't been a night that I can't remember that was jam-packed, bumping, people just loving it. And uh, listening to you guys has been, a, has been a pleasure by far because it just brings me back to those days of the good times. But I just wanted to ask, uh, this question to all of you guys individually for our audience. Uh, you've played at different rooms. You've played at different settings. You've played solo. You've played as a team. Uh, if there was just one night you guys can let us know that was the most memorable night to you guys, what night would that be and where were you? I'll answer first. And it was that night that I talked about with uh, the Freakas. I'll second right. that. that, yeah, that yeah, 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 that was my most memorable <laughs> night too. It wasn't Greek, but it was the most memorable <laughs> night. That's let's for sure. With, let's start with uh, George. Um, not to put oh. you on the spot, but if there was one night that you can let us know that was probably had the most either impact or the most memorable for you as a DJ. You know, I think it was that Goya night we were messaging about yesterday where me and Dimitri were opening up for... Uh, for Greco and Peter, because that was kind of our, I think that was like our first How old were club you? thing. How old were you? I think 17. 17, 18, 17. yeah. yeah. You, got, you got all the young Greek girls all like. <laughs> so you ripped up your playlist. There. Yeah, so like, I, yeah, like me and Dimitri. So we were, I remember we were in Dimitri's uh, basement practicing because that's where our equipment was. And we like, we were like, all right, we got to do this right. We got to make sure like we don't mess up and look bad in front of everyone. So we wrote down like every song and like the transition, the BPM, what time we're going to mix in, mix out, like everything. Like it was like a set, like complete set. And and we practiced it. We're like, all right, yeah, we got it. We got it. And then we show up where, and like Peter sees us put down this paper and he's like, what's this? (laughs) No, 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 you don't. And he just like takes and rips it. And we're like, oh, did you really feel it? Oh yeah. Oh my God. I ripped it up. Listen, (laughs) dude, I told you tough love. I looked at them. I said, do you think you're going to be able to call the shots? You don't know if these people are going to like the song or hate the song. You got to freestyle this. And George was like, what? I said, you'll be fine. And they were just fine. They were playing whatever. And you can never premeditate as that was, that's the way I grew up. You know, cause I've, I've been there. I used to think, Oh, I'm going to go in. I'm going to play this first, that second, that third. I'd play my first two songs and no one was dancing. And I'm like, okay, that didn't work. I better yeah. stick and move real quick. Oh, and bam, 30 seconds. Bam, and then all of a sudden I'd bite you. And then, and then, you know, so yeah, I, I yeah. was just messing with them. They were young. Yeah. I was like, you know what? Let me just yeah. mess with and them a little bit. It was the best thing you could have done for us. Cause oh. like, like you I said, you it. can't, yeah, you can't just go with a set playlist. There's different people, different crowds every night. So you have to know what you're going to play. And I mean, yeah, to this day, I've never 
had a set playlist again from that night. I mean, I have songs that I must play because they're bangers, you know, good yeah, songs. Right. But never, never like a, like I'm gonna play this, this, and this. <laughs> and it's it's just crazy how you go through a night and you're playing music and you know out of like thin air you just think of like a, a song that oh my god this song would just mix amazing with that or even like people uh requesting sometimes they're annoying but sometimes they give you great ideas to do a mix you never even thought you you could do um right. yeah so i think that's definitely the- my most awesome. memorable night thank you george you mean, about- like, you mean like the drunk like 18 year old girl that comes up saying you have to play my song it's I usually not the them are you sure that wasn't you ari it was me yeah. and the drunk. All right, right, all right, all right, right. What about how about you, Dimitri? What was your most so I think, memorable night? Yeah, so I I think I had mentioned it earlier. So it was it was rumor bunny ball. It was either 05 or 06, the Freakas plus Solaris. And I just remember that was the night that I specifically remembered like these two different styles of like that clean, like it's almost like the freak is like. I don't know if you did, but it's like you didn't play remixes. Like you mixed original songs good enough that didn't have like clean beat intros because your timing was so on point, but it didn't matter because it just like was so smooth. And I remember being in rumor, like at the bottom of the steps, like waiting and kind of just watching you both. Um, And then again, Peter played that night too, which it's just like theatrical (laughs) about how, you know, how crazy he gets on like banging that Q button and, and, and really like, like I said, taking those risks. So again, for myself that night, I specifically remember just the vibe and the energy being like so on point with the music. And, you know, it was one of the times that I actually had the realization of like music matters, like it will make or break your night. Like you won't know this until you go to a night with bad music. And then you'll start to appreciate the good music. So like what I was seeing these guys doing was definitely inspiring. And again, I, I, uh, awesome. I thank, I thank you guys. So Awesome. 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 <laughs> thank you. John, Just what so about- you guys know, Fati and I have no idea what banging the Q button means. So <laughs> I, I just want to put that out. <laughs> we use it's this orgasmic. <laughs> You'll John? know if you ever see Peter's equipment, it'll never have any of the like uh, the ink left on it because he just jams on them so much <laughs> that they're just they're all naked. Right. It's like a drum pad with before a drum pad. <laughs> what's your what's your uh, most memorable experience or most impactful, John? Oh, um, that that night that Adi mentioned earlier. Um, okay. The best. Yeah, it wasn't a Greek night necessarily. There were a ton of I think there might have been a lot of Greeks there. I'm not even sure. Um, Chris and I got a call. I think we were doing, were we doing a hip hop night there maybe at the we time? Were doing, we were doing venue back room Thursdays for racing the guys. Yeah, the Did it party. have anything to do with Harvard? I feel like Harvard meant something that night. I don't know. It was something going was on with nine. It was like a few weeks after nine eleven. It was it was like this random night just to get people together and just kind yeah. of have a good time. Yeah, that's was, probably why I wasn't like really into it. And I was like, why, why are we even out? Like, yeah, yeah, guys, yeah. it was. It, yeah, it, it we just kind of felt the same, I think. You know, and we're like, you know what? Whatever, let's go. And yeah, yeah you know what? Like, exactly. We weren't. We didn't even want to do it. We were like, oh, whatever. You know. Yeah, I know. We're like, whatever. We'll just go drop some music. That's so funny. Like, if it was a movie, it was like cut to John and Chris. Oh, I don't really want to play tonight. <laughs> cut to Ari Goods. I don't want to go out tonight. But and I think- cut to like with the club, and I'm like on the freaking tables. And yeah, was- man, the Heinekens were going down like water that night. <laughs> I remember I was. I think someone I- roofed you, Ari. What's that? I think somebody roofed Ari that night. <laughs> that was another <laughs> night. It wouldn't when, be the first. When he fell down the steps. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first, my friend. <laughs> But yeah, I think what I could say about a night like that, and I'm sure, you know, we all may have had a night like this where I think the vibe was so cool because there were no expectations, right? Yeah. It wasn't like we weren't placed into a box of like, here's what this night is, you yes. know? And so we just went out, we, we saw, you know, just just read the crowd. Yeah. We knew there were some Greeks there, you know, we, we knew some like hip hop heads, some house heads, some international people, and we just like, Whatever. That's a good just, point. Yeah, That's a good point. There was no expectation just, whatsoever. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, just, you 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 bring up a good point that yeah. <laughs> Peter kind of touched on, and 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 Dimitri a little bit too. But I mean, and, and we touched on it because of that playlist that you ripped up for him. 
<laughs> I, I, we haven't really talked about reading the crowd, which is the most important piece of it. Even if mm -hmm. your mixes suck, mm -hmm. if you can read the crowd with the music, you're still going to give them a good night. That's right. right? And that's why DJs yeah. are a necessity. No matter what the technology does, a DJ, a human, knowledgeable DJ is a necessity. So on that Absolutely. note, thank you, John. Well, how about Mr. Thriller? Me, I mean, my most memorable nights will always be uh, the big Sigma nights we did. You know, pick one. Funny ball. <laughs> funny ball. Well, Sigma, second version of Sigma. You know, you guys had some great nights at uh, El Panino well, anyways. I mean, yeah, when right. Nico was here, we talked about those. Those, those were awesome. Um, but when we did those big nights, I felt like, you know, what, 2010, 2011, Chris? Um, you know, we made the CD, we made a thousand CDs, pass them out. The, the crowd was just like intense. Like we, I think we'd, we'd walk out of that night and be like, wow, we just felt, felt good. It was a good feeling in there. Yeah. Like, can, be, you know, you know we, before we, before we move on to, to Costa, can you, can John, Chris and Arthur, can you guys just give, give us a brief, uh, synopsis summary of, uh, of Fuda Kalamatiani and, and, and what oh, man. how that you're happened. Up, you're bringing up memories. All right, let me, let me, let me let's, I, let's, I, let's, I, you, you guys, gotta, you guys, you guys, that I want to say, podcast. let's yeah, wait for the second one. one, but like, can you just give us a brief? Because oh, yeah, we're going to do multiple uh, series of these DJ uh, podcasts. So, so this isn't the last one. So there's more DJs, there's, there's more stories. I mean, God, yeah, me alone could fill like fifty. So of them. let me let me let me start. Let me start a little bit. Chris is going to come in. John's going to come in. I know that because everyone has their own view on it. But what I think Fuda Kalamatiani was 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 the cumulation of wanting to make a Greek song, a, a rap song, growing up as a young kid, as in, in in America, listening to hip hop, and then being Greek. And, and how it came along is, 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 is a whole saga. But um, Chris and John at the time, I was getting into music. I was learning how to DJ. I was doing a lot of production. I was, I was you know, I was wanted to get into remixing. And I met some people that, you know, some kids that wanted to rap. So what, what do I do is I say, you know, they, like, you know, somebody that can record us and we can mu make music. And I was like, well, Chris and John, they record music. They, they, they produced music and I was like, it was like the coolest thing I, uh, you know, around at the time that these, I knew these guys that can record music and, and make beats and stuff, which I was like in my infancy of. So, um, and then from that, um, you know, we, they, we produced a song and then we promoted the crap out of it. Um, Oh, man, know, there's was... so much to this, dude. Yeah, well, listen, Chris, I'm trying to be as vague as possible. But, I don't here, here's the thing. Guys, seriously, we're going to address the full story for sure, probably on another episode. Yeah. But um, it was that was just such a huge moment. It was a huge moment for me with the website. It was a huge moment for you guys. Let me just say one quick thing. I met my, my wife is from Maryland and I met her years after that. And we were talking about just like, yeah, I'm Ari. I, I did Greek boss. Like all the girls knew me in Boston, blah, 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 blah. And I had nothing on her because she was in Maryland. And then we talked about food and she's like, yeah, this guy, like Chris or somebody handed me a, a CD <laughs> down in Florida. I was like, Chris, but I, I know that mofo. I know him. And she's like, yeah, yeah, they were doing something over there. And I was like, see, see, I know. Yeah, we, so basically, dude, I mean, we, rec dude. we recorded a track and then we promoted the crap out of it. Dude, that was like, the most just... insane time ever, I think. You know, there was so much that went behind that. And then my cousin Bobby, down yeah, in Bobby Miami, Dino. he was like, yo, he's like, you're going to come down here. We're going to go to this Clearwater <laughs> convention. You know, you, you know, make like a thousand CDs. I'll make shirts. We'll do medallions. Like it was like <laughs> out of control. Cause Bobby, Bobby was from Miami. He grew up with like two live crew. They went to high school together. He knew he what? knew everybody down there. He was he was like, on Pitbull's Pitbull's promotion team. Yeah, I mean, he was like, We're gonna like, do legit. It, how we do I it. Down this Miami. About Bobby. I was like, all yeah. right, let's do it. So so there was this huge Greek convention from Greeks all over the country down in Clearwater. 
Yep. And he's like, at the end of this event, you guys are gonna stand by the door and you're just gonna <laughs> pass these CDs out. And you're gonna you're gonna pass the CDs out. You're gonna go up for the girls because they're gonna <laughs> defend themselves. <laughs> and you're gonna go down for the guys. I was like, all right, that's a trick that you guys use. Like, that's what you're gonna do. And I was like, all right, we start passing those CDs. Before you know it, every single person in Clearwater had a food de calamati and this CD. And and we Including heard stories my wife. years Including later. My wife. We heard stories years later, like, oh man, I remember that. We used to play that in the hotel room. We used to play that in the car. And we just sing along a Fuda Kalamatiani. And nobody had any idea who it was, what the song was Dude, about, it, like the it, history it, of it. It wasn't it. just that. It was like my wife like described you perfectly. And I was like, I know him. <laughs> what I was like, it's Chris. Dude. What you, year you was specifically that? Chris gave her the CD. The wife was like, yeah, right. I was in New York in Astoria and I heard it and I went up to the DJ and I was like, dude, who is that? <laughs> Yo, that's my boys. That's my voice at the beginning of it. It's my boys in Boston. So he's like, my voice at the beginning of it. And they sell that. It was, I went to Greece and they were selling the, the, on the beach. The, um, the, the Nigerian the guys were selling CDs with it. <laughs> Of, of us, of our song. That's like, awesome. I, re I remember Thriller. Thriller, you asked me once. You go, yo, Ari, what's uh, the download count? And I was like, whatever, man. It's like, it's probably like a few hundred, whatever. And I click on, back then you had to look in the logs, the, like the web logs. It didn't have yeah. like all this analytics. And it says like 85,000 something. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I gotta say like, this. What? What? We know you. And I was like, Thriller. It's like eighty-five thousand. Do you remember this? Yeah, I remember that. And I'm like, dude. I'm like, I was promoting the hell out of every forum. Every. I was before, like, I was like, I've never media. seen those numbers before. Awesome. Every, <laughs> every, every Greek forum in Greece and Australia, it, it was everywhere. You, you guys cost me a lot of money in our web uh, bandwidth, by the way. <laughs> Listen, I, I uh, we'll, say, we'll address that next time. I gotta say, you, you just mentioned something. You know you've made it when Nigerians are selling your CD on the beat. <laughs> and not only that, not oh only my, that song, they were they're selling what? my remixes, they're selling Chris's remixes, they're selling our, our, like original songs that we're doing. Like we did a couple original songs with some people, some guys right. from New York and stuff. Like well, they, it was pretty it was it was amazing that it, it went that far, you know. And There's also, also things. Fati, to your point, I got a porn from a Nigerian that you were in. So, <laughs> Thank you. a couple uh, more things. We, we could I probably, went to. Oh, I'm sorry, Fati. Were you gonna say something? I was. Just, I would say we could probably go on. And no, on. no, 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 no. Just, Hold on. I just, I just let, want. Let him go on. Go, 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 go. It's just a couple more things on this food of the thing, and and, and that's it. I promise you, Fati. <laughs> I go into Captain's Pizza. <laughs> and and uh and georgie was like have you heard that song food the calamati and man it's hot right now i'm like dude that was, that was us i remember this <laughs> oh my god that was you guys <laughs> he's, he's this. like you're beating uh sepita sovara on this like some streaming like uh greek uh site that was at the <laughs> yeah, time greek radio. i was like really um but then what's funny too is that alex kudos from new york one of my favorite DJs that I've heard outside of Boston, I, I, I didn't know him, but every time I heard him when we'd go to New York, I'm like, yo, this guy is clean. He's doing creative things. Do you know, do you know Alex Peter? He was Frisbee's no. boy. Who is it? Oh, Frisbee. That, that's what, Frisbee's that's why I asked boy. in New York. Alex Kudos, right? Okay. So I'm talking, he, he came down years ago to do a gig or something. And I was talking to him and he wanted to stop and do some music. I was like, yeah, I dabbled in some stuff in the past. You know, and he's like, oh, yeah, what'd you do? I was like, oh, you know, this and that. We did that song, Fuda Calamati Anida. He's like, oh, my God, that was you? Oh, man, we used to play that all the time, man. We was drinking, singing along. I was like, wow, man, everybody knows this song? You go on YouTube and you type Fuda Calamati Anida, you see all these, you know, Greek Greek people from Calamata saying, oh, the memories, I remember that. Yeah, everybody knew that song. song. I, I was still like, wow, this that became song. like a cult classic. And the you know, first time I, the the first... There's, like, uh, there's some videos with a million plays on it. Like, oh, yeah. it's ridiculous, you know? Yeah, yeah, the, the, first time, the first time that I really felt like a professional in the music industry, because I, I just got off of my gig as a, a music producer for iCast, I was like, guys, you have to, like, take care of the talent because once something gets big, their heads grow. You got to, like, uh, oh, squash oh. it. And I remember Don and Chris, I think we were in, like, some burger joint or something. Yeah, we were in uh, Somerville. We had visited you in some yeah, 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 yeah. we were at a burger joint. And I was like, I was like, you guys gotta like, you know, you gotta you gotta you gotta stay ahead of this. You guys like, no nah, man, we it's, all good, uh, it's all good, it's all good. 
And I was like, I'm telling you, I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, that fell apart pretty, pretty fast. <laughs> on that note, that, that's hey, about the time hey. that I made my exit from like all DJs. Yeah, John was like, man, I'm done with Dude, this. I'm, <laughs> tell, I'm telling you, because I came, I came from producing. <laughs> I came from producing. And like, I was on sets with like Eminem before he got big. I was on sets with like Nelly before he got big and all these people. And I was like, the second it went up, these people were like, yo, count the Eminems and I don't want the green ones. And I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like... This is where I'm like, guys, you guys are getting really huge. I mean, just my little stinky website had 85,000 downloads in a week. Like, this is going to be big. And I remember saying, like, you got to, like, you got you to take these people, the talent, the, the front in front of the camera and be like, yo. Well, look, is- look, in, in, in our defense, I mean, what, a, a huge part of it was because we were doing it for the passion. We were doing it, like, let's to create. Yeah. Song and, and then see what happens with yeah. it. Yeah. So we weren't like, and we were so happy to be doing it. I think we put all the other stuff to the side where it was like, you know, we didn't take care of it correctly. The greatest, but- the greatest stories, uh, Arthur, come from the passion. Yeah, unfortunately, that, that's the- unfortunately, people suck. And I mean, that place, that song came from a place at the time where from how we were living and the music we were listening to and the influences of it. If you listen to it, it's, it's, it's um, lean, back lean back with a reggaeton beat over it with, with, with an Arabic Greek, drum break, Arabic drum break <laughs> with, with um, a little bit of organ in it, you know, yeah, Greek uh, organ, a little Greek organ. Me being nah, Puff nah. Daddy in it in the beginning of it. And then Chris is in it. Like it's, it's like, there's like, there's probably about 15 people in this song. And there's a lot of subliminal things that you wouldn't even yeah. notice. All, all I know is, this shit right here. Yeah. <laughs> Every time that song comes on, I'm like. And you know what's crazy about that? We went to Rumor one night when Solaris and Frisbee were DJing. Yeah. It was when we were getting back into the Greek scene. And, and they played it that night. Mm-hmm. We didn't even ask them to play it. We were just observing, Frisbee, hanging out. Frisbee was the one that I heard playing it in New York. And then when he told me, and I figured it out, I'm like, see, see how it comes around? I'm like, those are my boys right there, right? So then I invited Frisbee to play at Rumor. And I was, um, you know, I was out of the scene for a couple of years. As I said, I kept on retiring every year. So <laughs> I was out of the scene. And then I went to New York. I met Frisbee. He was really cool. And I said, you know what, dude, you should come back to Boston and play with me. And um, we played that night together. And, and we had a blast. And, and I remember playing that song because it was a jam. I and, was like, I'm playing and, the song. And, and yeah. Pete, I remember when I heard it, I looked at the crowd reaction and everybody was singing along. I'm like, how the hell do these people know yeah, this that, song? That, I think that, that made it all made it all okay Real. for us. And it actually, you know, it, nice. it, oh, obviously was it was great. going on in the background. It, I mean, it, it was worth doing. Like it was yes. whatever the experience was, it was worth doing because no, you guys you guys put out something amazing. You guys put oh. out something. My wife, who's like uh six states away. I played it the first time in the car and she was singing right along with it. And I was like, I'll tell you, I think, I think that song too, I think represents maybe like almost an evolution of like, you know, from DJing to production, from DJing to remixing to like trying to do like an original production. And I think that's what that song represents for me. And and it all comes from- It was a symbolic song. You're right, Thrill. It was was very symbolic. Yeah, it was, it was like, I was like, well, we just made a song, you know. I mean, let's not say it, it was, you know, number one in uh, across the world, but like just to actually create a song and people are singing along with it was amazing. Oh, this is what I'm gonna do. While when I post this episode tomorrow, I am going to link to the GBTV episode, not the full oh. episode, the clip of that the, the segment we did on you guys. Oh, that and- was that. Uh... And it's going to be uh, awesome. at DJ Chaos's Chaos studio. studio. And it's going to yes. be awesome because that that, was... that segment was awesome. And uh, you guys, uh, uh, Greco, you are like full on. Yo, my boy's spitting this, and my boy's. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, this is I awesome. I got this. My ghetto was on. Was uh was on like uh it was uh, 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 the way we were speaking. We felt like we were like you know Death Row Records at that time. <laughs> yeah, wasn't it Greek Star Records? Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. See, I'm not even. I don't even like to mention these things because I'll tell you, oh, man. We don't. Dude. With I'll tell you, after that ended, I don't think I I would even mention it even in promotion. It was just a part of the past. It was what it was. I was part of that team. I I kind of moved forward with my own things. Whatever, but man. You I, guys are I, part I, of history. Yeah, yes. but I really I, I really go back on it and say, hey, yeah, I was part of that. I mean, maybe it's time now, but like, 
it's time. And, and so, you know, um, the day that we filmed the segment on you guys uh, was when I asked uh, John and Chris to do a, a little theme song that yeah. everybody is going to hear at the beginning of this very episode. So they, yeah, they, wrote, they wrote the theme we got song. Tony, we got Tony Pedikis, Peter, Pedikis. To, come to, to come to my house and, and he played the bouzouki. Play the intro. Oh my God. I did the, awesome. the, that, I, I use that. I use that song for everything. I use it for connecting awesome. Greeks, Boston Greeks. Royalties to the Greekers. And, and you know, and you know what, Adi? It's on. You didn't give us iTunes. much time. You didn't give us much time to make that. You yeah, like, I was like, yo, 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 do it now, now, now. I'm like, uh, I, I was like, we, we got, we got, we got the show's going on TV in like two weeks. Make it happen. <laughs> hey, you need to pay royalties there, buddy. <laughs> Not me. I, 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 like, I got, I got Tony. Right hey, Tony, can anymore. you play the bazooki for us? I got you. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is, we can go on and on. I mean, we've got so many stories, so many memories, what have you. But let's let's also talk to Costa, get him in on the conversation. And maybe I'm just, us- I'm enjoying <laughs> this. <laughs> I, I wish, I wish I could do this to, for quarantine forever. This is great. This no, is listen, like, listen, oh, guys, guys, every single one of you, plus Thano, plus uh, Nico, plus, I, I don't even know if I'm missing Yanni. anybody. Yanni. We're gonna, yeah, Yanni. We're gonna do this. We, we, this is gonna be recurring because this is too important to the Greek community. This is too important to the Greek scene. The most important, in my opinion, the most important Greek scene. You know, the time that I did the Social Network, but it's the most important time of my like kind of like molding of a like a of a person. So if you hate me, it's all these guys' faults. Well, if you like me, then then congratulate them. But this is like this is one of the most important things for the Greeks, and and we're this isn't going to be the only one. We, we there's too much to talk okay. about. It's yeah, going to be eight part eight part series probably. Oh least. no! Uh, yes. But uh, f- feeding off what you just said, what just listening to all these stories and all these backgrounds, and you know, obviously the music, but. It's it was it's more than that because we not only did we have a, make amazing nights and people had a wonderful time and memories and crazy yes. things going on, we were spreading our culture, you yes. know. Yes. Uh, yes. Bravo. That's the big and I, just listen on this because I remember what my father said when I first started DJing. He said, you know, obviously you gotta love it. If you don't love it, don't do it. He goes, don't waste your time. But second of all, he goes, it's about spreading your culture to the future generation about you know it's who we are as greeks anyways mm-hmm. so it's it's people you know we do it we enjoy it, we do it, but we're not realizing it until now that i'm sitting back listening to all these stories well, that it, 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 we're actually spreading our culture this is this is something beyond just right. mixing yeah, songs i second that that's I second yeah. that because I, I feel like sometimes as I'm DJing and I'm doing the mobile events where I'm doing weddings and christenings, even yeah. at the clubs, I feel like that that I'm I'm uh, uh, almost like a gatekeeper of the music, of of of, of our music and yeah. giving it to the people. Like and that's yeah. what our jo- our job is our our, our job is, right, is is to keep this music and play it for for them, you know, to experience their culture. You know, exactly. that's our that's part of our that's our job. And I always thought of myself as that. And I think it even goes, and I guess, like I was saying before, like it's that lineage where, you know, Peter was doing it and, and Chris and John, and then I was doing it, I'm doing it, and Dimitri and doing it. It's like, yeah. you're, 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 you're holding our piece of our culture and, uh, and moving that's, it forward. That's huge, man. Very, very Rick, the, you know, for me, like I'm, th- I'm listening to all those stories and Forty's like, what's the most memorable night? And look, guys, I've, I, can, I can talk for, for, for days and weeks. I've had so many fun nights, so many fun experiences. But I will say this, um, I feel like, you know, I I played maybe five Greek nights a year, am I right? Think like, you know, not not talking private parties, club nights, right? You had Christmas, you had Thanksgiving, you had, you know, maybe New Year's, uh, Valentine's Day, whatever you could tuck in, right? And then the long weekend. So five, six nights. And then I worked 52 weekends of the year playing, you know, house music and everything, three nights a week. So that's a lot of gigs. But for me, the first time that I played Greek music in a big room and the Greeks, we all had this 
electricity like vibe of yo our song is played at avalon man or our yeah. song you know like like this is this is you know a big club and we're listening to greek music and that was on that was unprecedented at the time so and i'll I'm never forget about it this. peter i'll never forget it you know like you, for you me, were playing I was that song that that <laughs> na, 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 na. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, when I heard that, dude, I got chills, dude. I, I, I know, mean, because I you, know. you know what? We weren't allowed to play Greek music in an American club, but we made it okay. And so for me, my most memorable nights, and I and, and there's lots of them, is when that happened. When I play, I remember, guys, my first, you know, I, said, I started off by saying I never played at the Roxy. I'm making a mistake. My first Greek night was at the Roxy. And then I got the job at Avalon like a month later, and they never let me play there again. So when I first played Greek music at, uh, at Avalon that night, the kids had Greek flags with them. Right. I don't know if you guys remember this, Chris, oh, the yeah. kids would roll oh, with yeah. Greek flags and they would be like, you're at a soccer game. They'd be, you know what I mean? And, um, and when I played Greek music on an American night, there was Greek flags all over the place. <laughs> and that hits you right in the heart as a, as, as a Greek, it just makes you so proud to say, man, like I, I am at the helm of this thing and I can play Greek music and I'm loving it. And dude, they were climbing on each other's shoulders, chanting, screaming Goose to bumps. the point where the Goose manager bumps. runs up to me and starts yelling at me. Right. This is like my first week working at Avalon. He's yelling at me, screaming at me. What the F are you doing? What the hell are you doing? And I'm like, I don't, I, I'm confused. So I look at him. I forget this guy's name now. And um, he's, he's going nuts on me because for an hour, I was pounding and it just kept on climbing. And, you know, as a DJ, you want, you want to do this, right? But I was just pounding it, pounding and pounding and pounding. And for an hour, I was just crushing it. And he's screaming at me because the bars weren't bringing up boots. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's not my problem. And he goes, you better chill it out right now. So that's when I learned a little bit of the politics too. Like, you know, but, but you know, I'll never forget that. That was probably my, my most memorable night. I'm playing... There wasn't, it wasn't all Greek. It was an American night, but there was a big contingency there of Greeks. And every time I'm playing them, they're screaming, they're going nuts. And I would do like two little song sets and then go back in two little song sets. And then at one point I just, I just kept on going, kept on going. Kept, and I was like, screw it, I'm doing it. And they were going nuts. And the Americans were feeding off of the Greeks because Greeks party, right? They party hard. And, and they were like, I love this. What, what, is, what are we dancing to? Uh, I don't care. Uh, uh, dude, I remember that. American girls wanted to dance. Uh, they wanted to dance Greek. I remember doing it. Uh, I remember, you, you know, we're talking about the after parties, right? From uh, the Wang. And we had VC and, 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 you know, all these people that would come in. So mm -hmm. one, one of the nights we book, I don't know if it was, I forget what it was, but this was early on. And no one got there till one in the morning. And the manager was pissed at me. <laughs> He's like, you booked this night, blah, 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 da, 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 blah, 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 blah. From one to two, they rang more booze than they do in a weekend, he told me. <laughs> He's like, brother, anytime you want to do a Greek night, you call me, <laughs> he says to me. I think every club important. manager had that same story. Like, anytime you want to do a Greek night, just call us. So that's, that's why that's... they still do them. People, if you, you go to Boston now, you have the Spasta kids still doing Greek nights because that reputation has lived on. So, so let me let me ask like quick question like how I was so embedded in the Greek scene, but now I have no idea. How is it now? Like how is that's it what now? that's from my understanding. That's that's what's really only going on now is that they're doing spasta nights and. But like, how are them. those nights? And they don't look that bad. I mean, you're, talk, you're talking uh, about pre-COVID, right? Pre-COVID, pre yeah. Yeah, 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 pre pre-COVID, but there's but, nothing going on now, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Sorry, I mean, so, sorry. I left. I left my misery at the door for a second, Chris. Before you had to remind me. So Adi, I, I think one of the things that's that's interesting about nights now, and I've only been to a few the past few years, is like when we used to go out, you knew everybody, every single person in there. You could be like, oh, I know. I, I might not know their name, but I've seen them. I know yeah. that guy, or I know her. I know him. And what I noticed now, the time I went a couple of years back, I didn't know a soul. Wow. A soul. Like they were all Greek and there was people there. There was the mass was there, but the, it, weird, we had no man. connection. Yeah. So it's like this new wave of people 
who they exist, but they're not in sort of the I blame market the internet. that we tap in. I blame the internet for that one. I totally yeah, blame the internet. Personal, yeah. Let me yes, ask, yeah. uh, let me ask yeah. Dimitri and George, the, the yeah. younger guys, like you hear these stories from all the rest. You hear these stories from me over the years. Like, like has the internet really like just like removed people from, from the passion of their, their culture and like, like when I was 19, 20 years old, like I had to go to the Greek night. I had to because there was hot Greek girls and there was hot Greek music that the only place I could get it was at the Greek night. That no longer is true because every hot Greek girl is on Instagram and on everything else. And every hot Greek song is on YouTube and everywhere else. So is, is, is that really what is stopping the community? Like, do you guys... You guys, as the younger generation, do you feel that that's what's happening? George, do you want to go, or you want me to? That's a that's a loaded question. I know <laughs> it, it, it's a, it's a tough I, I, question, but it's, just it's, give it me just tough. give me like like your your initial reaction yeah. to that. I mean, the, the internet has helped a lot, but it's also taken a lot. So, like, it depends on what it is. Like, as far as Greek music, like if you wanted to hear a certain song, you would go to the club and wait for that song. Yeah. You, wait all night till the dj dropped that song whereas now it's like i remember you telling me this instant gratification yeah we have everything on at our fingertips exactly youtube you know, spotify whatever it is and also about girls yeah if you wanted to meet someone you had to go to a greek night if you wanted to meet someone greek you go to a greek night um i don't yeah. know it, it's a very it's, complicated question i i think just to cool. add add something into that it's like we also live in a world now where we're in constant communication with everybody in our network, yeah. whether it's social media, text, whatever you want to be. And I think when we were going out, like, yeah, we were texting, but we were not like in this much of our each other's business as, as much during the day. So I think when we went out, we looked forward to it. Like I would send a text to my buddies being like, we're going out Friday, right? But it would sort of end there. Yeah. And then I would see them Friday. It was something to look forward to. Now, I just don't know. Maybe people are talking so much. They're well, so into each other that they don't go out as much. Let me, yeah, uh, I, let, me I, let me touch on a point that I, I was talking with uh, Foti about the other day when we were talking about doing this is that um, at the time when we were going out, you know, in nine, you know, 90s till about 2010, you know, we were all now children of, of the group of immigrants that came to America. So there was a huge mass of kids, you know, within a 20, 20 year range. So those were the kids that you'd see out at the clubs. Now the generation has, you know, turned over. It's also got diluted per se, because people are, have, are less, you know, our second generation now. So there's right. less yeah, yeah, Greeks, yeah. Less, less Greek music that they probably listen to or in, in Greek and being Greek is now more of a, a choice, not a, it, it, for me, being Greek is not a choice. That's what I am. Everybody, pretty much 99% of the people around me are Greek. That's how I grew up. For these kids, they're growing up in a different world. So they go into, might go to a Greek night. Now, in respect now to the music that's played, as a DJ, you have to adapt. You know, they, 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 they might know the, the biggest, only the biggest songs and not, you know, the, the, the traditional songs. So, you know, in our sense, I think, for the new generation and maybe why the, the 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 scene might you know has is dying or died is because you know the, uh, is there enough people to go out there and support a full greek night is that's that's my question oh, and, yeah. and your, your point to, uh, i want to uh kind of comment is the fact that w so if you think about our upbringing high school and maybe college maybe the majority of our personal friends were greek with some non-greeks right I think now the generation today might not have the same presence of Greek friends growing up in their neighborhood. Yeah. So, so basically we've become just, um, we, we've become so like embedded into America that it's no longer like, you know, a click quote yes. unquote, you know, it used to be a click. Um, but and even, and even now, and now it's not, it's not because we're embedded. We're embedded. Yeah. It's first generation. Now it's second generation. You know, your kids, all you, all you guys who have kids, what are the chances that they're going to marry Greek? I don't know. Yeah. 
you know, and it's just, I mean, look, it, it, it dilutes. Yeah. As Arthur said. I think the other thing too, is I think when uh, my experience, when I was doing the music production and, and Chris and John might I, like doing like the mashups and, and we were doing the mashups. Yeah. Because I, I, I think I thought a lot of people would relate to them when you're hearing like little Wayne on a VC featuring little Wayne. So mm -hmm. like now a young kid who's 16 years old in high school, who probably felt like me as like, I'm Greek, but I'm living in America. Now I was like, oh crap. Like I'm listening to Anna Vici featuring Lil Wayne or, you know, you know, or, yeah. you know, Drake on a, on a, on a Greek remix of a track. So I think that kind of maybe even extended our reach at, on the Greek nights while we were, we were pushing that music to different levels where, where it was bringing in more people that who thought that who had one vision of Greek music that was like, oh, just, you know, traditional bouzouki and stuff like that. But then we were playing it and it was like, holy crap, look, look, listen to what, what, how they're playing this music yeah. and mixing and mashing it up. And it, I think it was bringing more people in, you know, yeah. We, were, yeah. we were being contemporary. Well, I've definitely noticed a new wave of Greek people in Boston, um, like in their 20s. And um, the December before COVID, I think I did the last Greek night before everything shut down. Um, and it was these new promoters. Um, they were straight off the boat Greeks. Yep. And the people that went there, I, I didn't, I probably knew, I don't know, 20 people that came because I invited them. <laughs> and in the rest, it was a lot of off the boat Greeks that I've never met before. So, I mean, just that right there kind of told me there is a new wave. I think Greek nights will come back, you know, once we get past this whole COVID thing. All right. That's it. This is what we're doing post COVID. We are going to do, we are going to do, uh, Fati, what were we planning before COVID hit? Uh, we were actually going to plan and Peter can uh, chime in on this. We were, we were formulating the plan to do a, um, reunion night. Yeah, we were, we were putting that together, man. And it was going to be in March and then COVID came in March. We were going to have, we were going to have everybody except El Greco in on this. <laughs> <laughs> No, Greco, you were number one on my list. <laughs> so yeah, yeah we were. Well, we, we were, were planning. That. We were planning big things right before COVID hit. We were gonna plan like an encore casino throwback, an encore casino reunion concerts. Like you have no idea what COVID did to me and Fati. Like we held each other and we cried they, when COVID hit. We we did a podcast right last year, and you guys were like, "We got to do it, we got to do it." <laughs> and then I was like, "I don't know, I don't know." Then they talked me into it, and now I'm all pumped up. I'm like, "We got to do it, we got to do it." And then we shut down. <laughs> so of that so podcast. That's why COVID happened. Well, this is the thing: that COVID will pass someday, uh, slowly, uh, phases. I don't know, whatever. But we will get back to it, and everybody on this podcast is going to be part of this and we are going to bring it back. You know, I don't care about these young whippersnappers. I'm going to speak <laughs> as an old G like we are bringing it back and we're going to kill it. And we're going to, we're going to kill it because we got the talent right here. Listen, man, if you want to do a night with the network of people, we know it's got to start at seven. <laughs> <laughs> and you all got to train us on how to use whatever equipment's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you young mother effort. I if, I if I get some wine in me, good so, wine, not cheap yeah. wine. Cheap wine was younger, Adi. Good wine. We'll make wine. sure there's no stairs in the. I'm going. Hey, hey. <laughs> that that was beyond my control. But I will go all the way till midnight, my friend. Don't worry. You know what? Um, we were talking about how we all met met each other as DJs, but but how about how how did everybody meet? You know, Adi and Foti. There's some cool, cool Wait, history if, behind if that. If I remember too. when I first met uh, you and John, Chris, at, at, at Gessie, for some reason I remember bar. like I'm coming at you like a big Greek bubuna. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Timbaland was out. Timbaland, that was yeah. the hot song. <laughs> we're at Mercury Bar. We were all trashed. Yeah. Coming out at night, you were like, <laughs> yeah, I'm coming at you like the big Greek bubuna. I was like, yo, I like this guy. <laughs> I remember me and Chris just kept repeating that. <laughs> the rest was history. Hey, I'll tell you how I met Ari. Is I met Ari is like someone told me, well, it was Greek Boston and he was taking pictures. I was like, I want to be on the internet. I'm going to find this guy with the camera at the Roxy. And I found him. I'm like, take a picture. I can be on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Take a Classic, picture. Man. Yeah, funny. I, I met you at BC, I think, right? 
Is that where we met? Um, yeah, may, no, maybe even before BC. Maybe before BC. Yeah. I'm, I'm I just, just those, are, you know, I'm sorry, man, but just remember, I, I, I don't know if you guys talked about it while I was away, but talking about like how, um, and, and I'm going back to Costa, what Costa said earlier too. It's like we were spreading the culture. We were getting people to, to, to meet other Greeks. I mean, I just remember those in the 90s, man. I, I mean, all the universities, all, yeah, the, all, the, all the Greek clubs, we'd yeah. all, we all couldn't wait to get together in one place and right. party. That's the yeah. thing, man. It's the like... collegiate dances were huge. Oh, yeah. Huge events, yeah. I remember, back in the day. And when, when, when we did the, when we did two, I did two years in a row. Uh, I don't remember when. It was like 11, 12 or 12, 13, whatever. There was still like desire from these young college kids to, to get together. I don't know about now, man, 2021. Who knows? But. And yeah. look, you know, the, you know, you know, we still have Hellenic College who, 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 who likes, there's always students there that would always come to our Greek nights. And there's kids from Greece that come in, like Georgia was saying, there's always, there, there's kids that come here to study and stuff. Uh, and then with the crisis in Greece, a lot of more Greeks came here. So there might be more people coming, but to recreate well, that. Uh, wh that whatever, whatever the case is, we're, we, when COVID well, is not the big issue of the day, we're a hundred percent, no ifs, ands, or buts. We're a hundred percent going to do stuff. Yeah. So all, everybody here is involved. Everybody here has yeah. like, Art. what? Does, does that mean that we're going to start to take over the, uh, the church council now? Like, do we move in that, in that chapter of our lives? where we No, I, I will never, no, and then, and then I'm not, I'm not going anywhere near that. <laughs> and then we started doing <laughs> church events. Is that where we're going? Because yeah. Our, like, think about this. A big part of our culture, right? You all mentioned Rosendale, Lynn, Peabody, Quincy. We all grew up in the church community, right? Goya, oh, Goya yeah. basketball, uh, the church dances, and then it evolved to the nightclubs. So yeah, now our, so our social media back then was flyers on the cars at church. At churches. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was our Facebook. Every Sunday we had to go before <laughs> church. We had to fly all the cars. And they get in trouble <laughs> for making a mess. The <laughs> priest, the priest would call me all the time. Sukhleri, elasto parking lot ki kathari seta. I'm like, it wasn't me. He goes, your name's all over the place. I'm like, it wasn't me. I swear. You guys are killing the environment here. <laughs> I couldn't wait for those flyers, man. Oh, so <laughs> Keep this Greek flame going, like Arthur had mentioned, like, and Costa, you mentioned, like, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're, um, we're keep keeping the Greek flame going from generation to generation. So when we come to this point in our lives where you know, our kids are getting older. Do we then start getting involved with our church community to keep this flame going? Or what do we do? I mean, I think, I think you just have to have a presence that is not like, okay. So at this point, I, I, I sold Greek Boston because I didn't want to be the old guy taking pictures of like young girls because that's just creepy. You're lying. Not, not that I don't want to do that. Like I'll do it. <laughs> Like you want, you force me, Hey, I'll do it. But like, I didn't want to be that creepy old dude that I used to make fun of when I was young. And it was like, that time is gone. So now we, we have the experience. We have the, like, we have the network, we have the connections where we could pull off cool stuff that we couldn't do when we were younger. Ooh. I'm just me and you 40 and not to drag you down, Peter, we're not going to be in front of that camera like as we're promoting this stuff and we're the men, we're the cool guys, like girls, like get all over this. Like, you know, that's where I'm going to have Dimitri and uh, George for, but this is like, we can pull it off because we have the experience. We have the history. We have the network. We have the friendship. We have the know-how and post COVID, God damn it. We're going to, we're going to do something and we're going to bring it back. And if we can't bring it back to 2000 Greeks, like in Peter's heyday, we're going to bring it back to whatever the maximum that we can do now can do. And you have my word on that. All right. On that oh, note, oh. let's do it. <laughs> on that note, I'm going to go put my son to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> on that well, note, I'm going to bring my, my milk heart. of magnesia and uh, <laughs> This, this was uh this was great i the fact that we got together and the fact that we were able to get together collectively at the same time the same day the same night the same hour is beyond me 
because we hey, can have, at least we're all on the east coast we, like, we can never get so many people at once within our network to commit to a certain day and time so thank you for doing this but here's uh, what i'm going to say a pleasure each and every one of you guys you guys every single one of you guys are awesome every single one of you guys played a pivotal role in everything that has been the greek scene in boston every single one of you guys has played a pivotal role in everything that i perceive as like my upbringing my my like my coming into the the greek scene yeah. um my business was the greek scene and every single one of you guys played a pivotal role in that now we're doing this podcast with this whole new thing and every single one of you guys will play a pivotal role in that never will we forget this network never will we forget this friendship and like this is the first episode of many more to come because honestly i don't i'm not even going to say anything about the future episodes i'm just going to say seven o'clock uh next thursday just be here and we're going to have a million things to talk about and we're going to have like we're going to have to be forced off the air because we have so much stuff to talk about and like this has been so exciting for me. I was so looking forward to this and this was better than what I thought it was going to be. And I love each and every one of you guys. And I thank every one of you guys for coming, for being on here. The next time we do this and I don't want it to be too, I don't want it to be too far in the future. So I say, I say once a month, if you guys are down once a month, we do this and we talk about the old days. We talk about the, the, the issues that, pertain to us we talk about the we talk issues. about stories about you what we talk about stories about you back then no stories about me especially you most Chris. of them are gonna have to be man <laughs> john i puked in your car chris i puked on your cds we don't talk about that <laughs> so <laughs> I, no i think you spilled beer on my cds oh that's what it was i have yeah. the video actually of you coming down <laughs> chris running down the stairs and talking to a bunch of people, I don't know who they were, but there was a video camera going, and he's like, yo, Adi just spilled beer all over my CDs. And you were so pissed. And every time I see that video, I, I laugh my ass off. That's what? a big no-no, Adi. That's a big no-no. <laughs> you don't mess with the DJs, First of CDs, all, whatever it is. It's like in, we're in that, OCD in that, about that stuff. Costa, in that same video clip, it's me talking on the mic, and I'm like, Hey, everybody, like, hey, <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck is going on? But anyway, guys, this was awesome. This was so good. Peter, you are so much an influence more than I ever perceived you to be. Chris, oh, I love you, man. You are awesome. George, I mean, we used to hang out and smoke cigars and play COD. You taught me COD, actually. <laughs> John, my God, you, the, the history of all of us is like insane. Thrilla, the man, the coolest guy in the world. Costa, the name, Hellenic Sound, you, your brother, the nicest guys in the world. Like, I can't even like say more. Seven, you DJed my baptism, man. Like, you can't get better than that. <laughs> and uh, 40. I, I don't know. I, I don't know you that well, so like I'm not gonna say much. I, you know what? I want to say thank you to Forty and Adi for for putting stuff like this together, man, and keeping well, it alive and and generations to come get to hear this because, you know, we we I've had a, a a cool time just going down memory lane with all these guys at different parts of my life. It's been awesome. But if you guys didn't put this together, we wouldn't get it out there. And and, and this is awesome. some some cool history for thank the Greeks, you know. Thank you, so Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. We appreciate. You know, as as, as you, much John. as as much as I said that we're the gatekeepers of the music, you guys are, are, the, are, the, are the gatekeepers of the culture of our generation. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And, that, and and without Greek Boston was so influential. I mean, you say we're DJs, we're influential. Greek Boston was influential on 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 us, like. To being get be just even like I said before, getting my picture on Greek Boston, I, I thought it was, I thought it was uh, the best thing in the world. Um, but like your website for so long was such a, like to this day, people are like, um, yeah, I think I've seen your name on Greek Boston. I'm like, okay, it was the go, it was the go to site for Greeks. You know, so you guys, you and Fonti together, together are, are keeping our community together. So listen, what we we, we appreciate that so much. But you I, know, even, you... I remember the day you told me about the idea of Greek Boston. <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, I'm putting this site together. It's going to be all about the Greeks in Boston. 
And and that was like when the internet had just come out. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, way, the back, way back. Yeah. Still oh, trying I, to figure out how to email. <laughs> we I mean, we appreciate you, that. You, Ari, you and Zuckerberg were in Boston at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I know. I bet you Zuckerberg saw some of these picture galleries yes. and he got the idea for Facebook. The I original go social network. Money. I will go. Let's go. The original social network, GreekBoston.com. I'm going to be like a Winkle Vi and I'm going to sue that guy for something. I don't know what. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but listen, guys, truly, truly, you guys are the Greek community. This is the first episode. Everybody out there is listening. This is the first episode of a series because there's way too much to talk about. We got the first generation, second generation, third generation. We got a lot to talk about. There's a couple of DJs missing we're going to bring in next time. So just know that this is the first episode. Thank you so much, Dimitri, John, Arthur, Costa, Peter, Chris, George, Forti. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you guys. You, this was an awesome episode. The thank best you episode guys. that thank I've done. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. We, we love you all. Yeah. Man. Yeah. We love you, you guys. Good night. And everyone. Costa, right, make buddy. sure Good make night. sure Mike is on the next episode. I'll get him. Definitely. We'll get him next time. Yeah. I'm upset Absolutely. right now. I'm upset right now. Mike, next Mike time. is the light nicest guy I've ever met in my whole life. Oh yeah, the Blathos boys, you can't get nicer than them, man. You can't get nicer than them. Thanks, right, guys. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Everybody, thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night.